with him. And then Salah, Diaz and Gakpo, the front line. So Diogo Jota on the bench, Canate injured. Referee John Brooks blows his whistle, but there's a false start. But off we go. And it is Dominic Soboslai who gets the first touch of the match, kicks off and plays the ball back into central defence. And then immediately we see Alexander-Arnold and Gordon together and Alexander-Arnold playing the ball through to Soboslai inside the Newcastle penalty area on the right-hand side. And uh, Botman has to go across and block that out for an opening corner to Liverpool after 20 seconds. Great movement by Soboslai, desperate to get into the box here. And that's one of the things Liverpool love about him. He does get forward from that midfield there are always going to go beyond the back line dangerous in the first seconds and I think one of the contests that we're looking forward to seeing today is Anthony Gordon former Everton man against Trent Alexander-Arnold and it was uh, it was Alexander-Arnold and Anthony with that challenge in midfield that was won by Alexander-Arnold who now takes this corner Pope comes didn't get there and it is headed wide and high of the back post and it is a goal kick to Newcastle whether it was Virgil van Dijk who got there or Matip two of them were together and uh, in any case it was wide and high and behind yeah um, to be honest if you're a goalkeeper you want that first touch to be a good one a confident one you don't want it to go out and try and punch and miss it completely so a bit nervy there on the back line I mean it wasn't a particularly great cross it was in an area that he should have been able to come and either collect or punch but he missed it uh, two matches being played in the premiership in Scotland Dundee have just taken the lead against Hearts it's Dundee 1 Hearts 0 and I think we'll be going to St Mirren shortly uh, the Dutch Grand Prix by the way continues on Sports Extra the delayed Dutch Grand Prix and the cricket will follow that uh, latest in the Super League is Huddersfield 16 leads 12 in the three o'clock kickoff there so uh, Newcastle United nil, Liverpool nil. First chance of the match to Liverpool. And here is Van Dijk playing it forward from the back, but Salah had just strayed offside. And it is uh, a free kick to Newcastle. And uh, Eddie Howe comes forward and applauds his team there. So clearly they've, they've worked on playing the offside against Liverpool and they got it right there. Yeah, it was an absolutely brilliant ball from uh, Virgil van Dijk there, finding Salah. Salah's almost through again, but cut out there in the centre-back position. Yeah. Ball played in from the left-hand side. We will go to St Mirren in a short, shortly, but Trippier plays it forward, and then van Dijk comes across and sends the ball away downfield, so Newcastle have it at the back. And uh, the reason why we are going to Gavin Wallace at St Mirren is... They have scored, John. St Mirren 1, Aberdeen 1. It was a penalty. Ryan Strain with a cut by Angus McDonald handled inside the box. And Greg Kilty after a VAR check. As cool as you like, St Kilaroos the one way. This second half has got everything in it. St Mirren 1, Aberdeen 1. Newcastle United 0, Liverpool 0. And Alisson passing the ball out from the back. Here's Matip, first appearance of the season. Uh, playing the ball infield towards Gakpo, who was caught and that is a free kick John Brooks free kick just forward and right of the centre circle for the visitors to Tyneside in their red kit with the white trim and here is the uh, the new signing Wataru Endol came on as a substitute against Bournemouth last week the number three uh, 30 years old he is you know so he's no youngster captain of the Japanese national team you might remember watching him at the World Cup or indeed listening to him in our commentaries signed from Stuttgart for uh, somewhere in the region of 16 million pounds and playing as the middleman in the midfield so uh, so McAllister and Soboslai do have that license you can actually see them Pat can't you both in very advanced positions as Newcastle have the ball at the back yeah um, intriguing to see how it works I think uh, Endo looks like he's going to try and be the most the deeper of the two most of the time very interesting thing which uh, Matip's doing with Trent Alexander-Arnold just now you know that Trent's going to try and go into that midfield area as often as possible but now again he's dropping into centre back and mm -hmm. allowing Matip to go asking a lot of questions about Anthony Gordon who looks quite confused by it at the moment <laughs> Tonali now playing it forward for Newcastle but that's over hit and the ball runs away out of play does it run out of play? Isaac's chasing no it stayed in play so it had to be played in from the far side by Van Dijk back to goalkeeper Allison, and uh, and of course this has been a feature Alexander Arnold playing this role that Pat Nevin was talking about there uh, as he is now he's you know stepped into midfield alongside Endo I thought he I thought he played it very very well against Chelsea in the first match of the season at Stamford Bridge Pat I mean it's, it's funny what so many people doing it when we noticed Manchester City have been doing it for a long long time 
Um, <laughs> but absolutely hilarious watching Spurs doing it last week and having both you know, the fullbacks going and playing in that position at the same time, which is uh, pushing it a little bit, but it seems to be working yep. for Spurs. And uh, speaking of pushing, uh, Anthony Gordon has just pushed Alexander Arnold in the back, and uh, Alexander Arnold went sprawling off the field and, and actually I think disappeared down into the into the dugout in front of us and he's been yellow carded by referee Brooks I have to say I, I can't tell you why did he say something did he approach one of the officials well un unless he feels that that was for simulation but he, oh, but he, was, not. he was he was definitely pushed in the back so it's a yellow card for Alexander Arnold Liverpool come forward down the right-hand side, Salah, that's lovely, goes past Burns so easily, now into the penalty area, Burns done well, Burn caught up with the Egyptian king, went past him, and big Dan Burn got a foot in, and then Gordon is, is pulled back by Alexander-Arnold, who's just been yellow-carded, and Van Dijk comes across and is pointing to somewhere else, almost as if he's trying to take the referee's attention away from Alexander Arnold who was yellow carded seconds ago Jurgen Klopp has now come across to the fourth official Eddie Howe's out on the edge of his technical area with his hands on his hips Kieran Trippier's now as the Newcastle captain come across so both captains are there and, and Alexander Arnold is being spoken to firmly by John Brooks and is given what we have to presume is a final warning when he stays on the pitch 100% a final warning there was an elbow raised definitely caught Gordon now it wasn't a hard one it wasn't a brutal one but you don't do that seconds after you've just got a yellow card and Gordon's getting away from him we're interested in that battle it's becoming more interesting already well, I'm pleased I mentioned it now Pat. Yes. Newcastle nil Liverpool nil is the score this is five live on our Premier League Sunday, our second commentary of the day, all the matches covered, all the top football, uh, World Service are with us, listen as well if you're on the move on this, what is in certain parts of the country, a bank holiday Sunday, weekend afternoon, here's Endo heading it forward, out to the left hand side, Robertson's onto this, but Tenali in with a challenge on him, and this is warming up now after the early tussles involving Alexander-Arnold and Gordon, and Newcastle go all the way back to the edge of the penalty area, to share long right-footed pass from share this is for Gordon to chase Alexander Arnold chasing him ball runs into the fullback position now Gordon faces the play takes on Alexander Arnold who leans into him uses his body uses his arm as well legally and then it's up towards Gakpo who's beaten on the halfway line by Botman frenzied stuff now McAllister the World Cup winner the Argentine Alexis McAllister sent off last weekend red card rescinded in midweek McAllister the number 10 bringing it forward to the edge of the penalty area plays it infield not Bruno Gimmerange and behind for another Liverpool corner before they take it back to Gavin Wallace at St Mirren Aberdeen and at this rate St Mirren will be going to the top of the league John they're up 2-1 now St Mirren 2 Aberdeen 1 Alex Grieve on the end of the through ball and he kept his composure to slot pass Keller Roots in goal St Mirren 2 Aberdeen 1 and a corner to Liverpool from the right and what have you spotted Pat? Uh, goalkeeper <laughs> Alisson's actually in the opposition's half at the moment you don't see that very often he's actually come to speak to Alexander Arnold yeah. who is standing as the uh, well Newcastle have got everyone back to defend this free kick and this interestingly is going to be taken by Robertson so it's an in-swinger from the right Pope comes doesn't get there either and he was being challenged by Van Dyke. however I don't think either of them got a touch the ball bounced into the Newcastle right fullback area then Trippier and the Gallagher end howling and waving their arms around they feel that he was fouled by Salah Trippier and referee Brooks gives the free kick for the first couple of minutes John I think uh, Liverpool, wanted, Liverpool wanted to keep the ball try and quieten down this uh, fan base around here kind of did so but as soon as that fell after that yellow card happened Gordon suddenly it changed the noise grew again a little bit more belief in the fights come back into this Newcastle team they didn't start as quickly as I suspect Eddie Howe wanted them to but they're certainly in it now Newcastle United nil Liverpool nil uh, also keeping across the uh, the one day cup quarter final in Southampton where Hampshire made 306 for 9 Worcestershire on, uh, on our 152 for 3 after 28.3 overs and uh, commentary on that via the cricket pages of the BBC Sport website as is the case with all of the domestic cricket throughout the course of the season supplied by our 
colleagues in BBC local radio as you will find many 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 football commentaries as well your local team brilliantly covered by BBC local radio Newcastle nil Liverpool nil long ball from the back for Newcastle from Cher onto the head of Alexander Arnold he has Salah who turns plays it forward Sobosla he's got four men in black and white shirts around him Joe Linton put in the challenge bounces for Sobosla again but um, Almiron does well chasing back to intercept the pass and it's played forward towards the halfway line Liverpool who uh, have won here in each of the last two seasons and they've started they're seeing more of the ball they've tried to quieten the crowd but Robertson over hits the ball downfield and Newcastle have got that back off inside their own half well one of the questions that uh, Arthur Brisbane was asking is at the start of the game was about these two midfields playing against each other and I have to say I think Liverpool are nudging it at the start here I mean Sabozla has got forward a few times McAllister looks very comfortable on the ball when he's got it at the moment Tonali's not really been able to get into the ball and neither has Bruno Gimenez but it's very early days now Huddersfield 18 leads 12 in the Super League Liverpool take possession again floodlights are brightly on the sun's disappeared again we've had some very very heavy showers in the northeast of England today but it's dry at the moment and uh, umbrellas are at the ready though here's Van Dijk playing the ball back towards Alisson all in green with those black gloves of his but the ball at his feet fires it forward right footed Botman heads it down ball eventually bounces to Bruno Gimmerein who hooks the ball over his head he's away from McAllister and McAllister just clips his heels down goes Bruno Gimmerein thousands and thousands of Geordies scream for a yellow card for McAllister but um, that was Argentina on Brazil and it's a free kick to Newcastle lovely bit of skill there by Bruno Gimmerein it was interesting he turned round and begging towards the referee and you could see he was just about to do the imaginary yellow card and changed <laughs> his mind immediately Sorry. the players are beginning to learn suddenly remembered that all of the players all of the clubs were told this season any waving of imaginary cards would mean a yellow card for whoever does it so clearly the message has got through well it has in this case 12 minutes play Newcastle nil Liverpool nil and uh, real talking point in the early stages the uh, the card the second yellow card not shown to Trent Alexander-Arnold ball played forward by Trippier to the edge of the area Liverpool played away and uh, and in fact Luis Diaz is able to win a, a throw in off Almiron for Liverpool in their own left back area I think Pat you know with the the, the incident there first of all a yellow card which seemed which seemed a funny one the, the, yeah. the yellow card that was shown to Trent Alexander-Arnold and as you said at the time whether it's that's something he said or whether it was for simulation wasn't entirely clear but you know, when you look at the two incidents clearly the second incident was far more worthy I think in the eyes of most football watchers of a yellow card than the first well we've got such a fantastic vantage point sometimes we're a lot about too close whatever happened it happened between us and the dugout and it was below the dugout so we couldn't really tell what it was and sadly we haven't got a monitor here so you know the, the second one there is no doubt that uh, Trent Alexander Arnold's his heart would have been in his mouth there he knew that it took his elbow out a little bit it wasn't a vicious elbow but you take a chance when you you do that when the players got away from you which Anthony Gordon had Nick Pope playing the ball out from the back and uh, here's Tonali sweeps it forward right footed that was a lovely pass to Almiron on the halfway line who takes on Robertson tried to go around the outside Robertson was able to recover now Almiron moves infield here's Tonali on the overlap Tonali's cross sweetly struck comes off the head of Van Dyke, bounces out to the the bleach blonde head Gordon on the left hand side and now Bruno Gimmerang angle ball high over the top Trippier is there near the dead ball line leaping for it got a touch but couldn't keep it in and it's a goal kick to Liverpool and it's nil nil yeah it was one of those moments there where uh, Dan Byrne overlapped well Gordon had the ball with the way this game started don't do that just allow Gordon to have one and ones when it comes up with Trent Alexander because Trent did very well in his last piece of defending inside the box but Anthony Gordon only needs to go by him once he had him one and one there and it was the wrong thing to do he's keen to get round but Dan not that time leave your winner alone Newcastle nil Liverpool nil
after it finished earlier. <laughs> Actually, a real thriller. We were listening to Ian Dennis and Paul Robinson uh, sitting here in the in the commentary position at St James's Park. Sheffield United won, Manchester City two. It finished. So three wins out of three for the defending champions after Rodri's late winner. We'll have uh, interviews from that match at half time on Five Live. Uh, and Burnley won. Aston Villa three so another good win for Aston Villa as uh, Bruno Gimmerang tries to play it through near the edge of the penalty area bounces to Gordon Gordon with a touch here's Isaac and now Joe Linton sweeps it goalwards from an angle near the edge of the box but with the bend he actually bent it back into the chest of Allison, who was able to make the catch. Right in the midst of that there, there was just one little piece of skill by Isaac. Everyone slightly panicked, the ball's zipping about. Comes to Isaac, the three players around him. No, no, calm. Take the ball, drag a few players towards him within seconds, and then he lays the ball wide. He is a class act when he gets the ball to his feet. Play is moving smoothly from end to end here on what is currently a dry afternoon. Here at St James's Park, we're watching it from quite a low level. Two managers just beyond the, the roof of the dugout, which is dappled with spots of rain. Here's Gordon now as Newcastle come through the middle, takes a shot, took a deflection, which took a bit of pace off it. They took it wide of Allison, but he was able to move down to his left and dive and, and hold on to the ball. I mean, Gordon's trying to get the ball all the time now. He's really... I mean, it's the winger's dream, isn't it? You know, you know that guy's marking you. has got... And he's got big rate at the start, but it's not Storm Alexander oh, Arnold now. Good play, Alexander Arnold headed the ball past his man and then uh, tried to take it on, which he did down the right wing. But Dan Byrne did his job and was able to take the ball away and pass it away for Newcastle. Well played, Alexander Arnold. That was a great touch there, great thinking, quick thinking. Now Luis Diaz on the left hand side. Luis Diaz into the penalty area, the angle's tight, defenders there, shoots, Pope makes the save and pushes it around the post for a corner. That's the first chance that Luis Diaz has got to play and that left wing running straight at Trippier had him turning his back that's the one thing you love to see as a wide player if you get you see the number in the back of your marker when you're running towards him he's not on balance so he goes straight past him there gets on target keeper saves it but first moment he's had a chance to run at his defender and it looks as if he's got him on toast yeah Luis Diaz who scored in the first two games of the season the opening goal at Chelsea scored as well Liverpool's first against Bournemouth last weekend and he was nearly in for his third corner though out swing out which is headed away Byrne got up unchallenged high I mean he has a head start Byrne the tallest man on the field and it's out of play for a throw on the far side but excellent play from Luis Diaz you don't see Kieran Trippier too many go past Kieran Trippier in the way that Luis Diaz did there yeah I mean the, the tummy was was fantastic because I thought I'll send them outside but he just clipped inside running out of traffic but they don't mind about that some of the pace and the, the quality with the ball at his feet is Diaz doesn't mind that there's plenty of players he knows in the box that he can be he could be tripped up so he kept on going he was lucky unlucky not to finish it Newcastle playing out from the back hence my uh exclamation because Salah almost blocked the pass from Botman but it put it behind for a, a goal kick to Newcastle you've done well as Pat as well Pat you noticed that I was trying to remember a password to get onto an app yes. to find out why it was that Alexander Arnold was was yellow carded and uh, you've successfully done that I was able to remember the password the bane of everyone's lives yeah. at the moment I think I only have about 380 different <laughs> passwords anyway the the result of that is it was a yellow card for a delayed restart by Trent Alexander Arnold that's why he was booked and uh, it wasn't could... a huge amount of delay but all you need to do is hold on to the ball yeah and that's clearly what he did I mean I think it was out of our sight where he was slid off the field but the original point was I thought he'd been shoved over by Gordon before he went off the field I mean if if he'd been if he'd been sent off and that was in the first few minutes of the match I mean can you imagine the fallout from that David Moyes was talking about this last week actually um, after the West Ham Chelsea game and saying well there are going to be you just expect many 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 more red cards this season if we're going to see yellow cards for delaying the restart which uh, Sir Alexander Arnold under no great pressure from Gordon passes the ball out of play on the halfway line Newcastle take a quick throw here's Joe Linton who uh, rather awkwardly manages to keep possession of the ball but then play it back to Tonali and Newcastle recycle it through central midfield but that's an overhead pass through from Cher that bounces all the way over 
the top of uh, the inside right position through for a goal kick and it remains nil nil Pat Nevin well I know uh, Moise was talking about there there would be lots of yellow cards for it for stopping the, the restarts of the game well don't do it then you don't have a right to do it so you just have to accept that's a new rule new rules come in in football all the time you have to react to them so early on there will be a few of them and there have been a few of them already but you have to get used to it as a player the game should be allowed to flow and the Newcastle fans are on to Allison, who is taking a little while there over the goal kick so the fans know as well that the officials have been told to produce red uh, yellow cards for delaying the restart which Allison was doing there ball played forward from Matip but he holds his head because he's passed it straight at Byrne now Joel Linton Isaac tripped by Gakpo free kick to Newcastle 10 yards inside Liverpool territory and uh, and Jurgen Klopp just has has a message there for Trent Alexander-Arnold Gordon is right there next to him and he's revitalized now Gordon in, in a Newcastle shirt after an uncertain opening period as a Newcastle United player but certainly somebody who was uh, watched him a lot at Everton I hadn't realized just how quick he is as an, um, Anthony Gordon he is absolutely lightning with and without the ball he is showing it this season for Newcastle just 16 appearances last season after he joined from Everton for big fee 40 45 million pounds but he started this season in the team excelled pre-season and, uh, and he's up against Alexander Arnold today it's Newcastle nil Liverpool nil long ball forward and Pope comes out of his penalty area not too far away from the place where he was sent off for uh, handling the ball outside the box in this match last season when he was up against Salah on this occasion though he did have Dan Byrne there as well for help and Byrne was able to uh, look after Salah and it was put out for a throw into Liverpool on the right hand side so still nil nil mentioned the uh, latest in the one day cup also the uh, the big day in the hundred continues and the latest on that comes from Atif Nawaz at Lords well we have a winner in the women's hundred competition 2023 the Southern Brave come out on top after two uh, times falling at the last hurdle in the first two competitions this time their third final in a year they've been successful they win this match by 34 runs successfully defending their 139 for six Danny Wyatt starring with the bat and uh, an all-round effort with the ball. Uh, Charlotte Edwards, the coach, is thrilled. Uh, Anya Shrubsoul's family members in the crowd watching her play a last game here at Lords. They're about to lift the trophy here at the home of cricket. A huge moment for the Southern Brave team as they win the women's 100 by winning the final over the Northern Superchargers by 34 runs. And the men's to come. It's on Sports Extra. Watch it on the television as well on, uh, on the BBC. Here is Joe Linton, nil-nil. Joe Linton turns as well against Endo then Tonali hits a pass but Almiron's going to do well to keep in but he couldn't even though the, the ball was bouncing he managed to hook it back but out of play for a throw into Liverpool near the edge of their own penalty area and here is Endo again in the action in the midfield Liverpool have gone from Hendo to Endo throw in for Newcastle on the far side here's Trippier Trippier little ball in field to Bruno Gimmerange who has that speckled effect with the uh, the bleach blonde hair at the start of this season as Byrne goes back to Botman in the centre circle to his right to share and then Bruno Gimmerange again forward to Tonali who went down very easily under the challenge of Van Dijk no free kick Liverpool come forward Gakpo to Salah Salah now up against Byrne cuts in field left foot shot curling straight at Pope slightly above his head and the Newcastle goalkeeper just patted that down and then underarmed it out and Newcastle are on the move through their captain Trippier over the halfway line he goes now Almiron takes it up gives it back to Trippier Trippier returns the pass down the line Almiron now cutting into the penalty area taking on Van Dijk goes for the byline cuts back left footed cross Endo heads that away for Liverpool and then McAllister on the edge of the box turns it back to Van Dijk who controls it instantly even though it's hit at him from seven or eight yards away at pace by his own teammate McAllister and cleared it away, nil-nil. Great willingness for Almiron, he got the ball deep, there wasn't anything on, played it back, played a one-two, then went into the box and he's flying. And I think if it had to been anyone else other than Virgil van Dijk in front of him, he'd have tried to take him on. He took one look and thought, nope, I'll come back. 
didn't go past him and uh, Van Dijk not only a brilliant player and calm under pressure but he also he spooks players doesn't he maybe <laughs> think I can take some players on but there's others I'm not too sure about yeah it's uh, as regular oh Gordon's in he's beaten Alexander Arnold to the edge of the area Gordon scores strokes it past Allison as he came out a little slip from Alexander Arnold Gordon was in away past him and it's 1-0 to Newcastle and that's 1-0 for Gordon over Alexander Arnold too and Newcastle St James's Park celebrates the opening goal 1-0 against Liverpool I've got to say John you said it right at the start before the game started the importance of that battle between Trent Alexander Arnold and Anthony Gordon and Anthony Gordon has had the better of it right from the start but really early on but Gordon's pace constantly in behind there He's not getting any protection whatsoever. Trent Alexander-Arnold purely because that most of the winger won't come in front of him. And it always looked like if Evans was going to come in this first half, it was going to be Gordon. And it is. And by the way, it could have been a sender off there as well because Trent Alexander-Arnold tried to pull him back. Just escaped him as the ball was played back to Alexander-Arnold. It just ran under his foot. He was trying to control that Alexander-Arnold, but didn't get the touch on it. It rolled under his boot and in that instant Gordon was past him onto the ball running through the middle one on one and did well tucked it away Allison going down to his left but Gordon finished well only his second goal for Newcastle United in a competitive match and it means the score is Newcastle 1 Liverpool 0 and that is a that's a big early goal in this match uh, it certainly is and they, they kind of deserve it for, they've known what they wanted to do a lot of teams do like to play in behind the right full back at Liverpool. We all know this, but they didn't play in it. Was, I have to say it was Trent's mistake there, the ball going under his the foot to some degree. But when that happens, you need to stay calm and you got through it. And certainly Anthony Gordon was the calmest man in this stadium because one and one with a very good goalkeeper, he just slotted it. Confident, wasn't it, the way that he put that away as Alisson was coming out. The former Everton man scoring against Liverpool. Although Anthony Gordon did actually start off at Liverpool before he moved to Everton. And now Gordon plays it through to Isaac. Van Dijk right on the edge of the area. There's a little trip on Isaac. Referee Brooks. Oh, he sent him off. Van Dijk red carded for that foul on Isaac on the edge of the area. And the referee deeming that that was the denial of a clear goal scoring opportunity. And Van Dijk points at his chest. He can't believe it. But the referee's made his decision. Jurgen Klopp now is in the ear of the fourth official, Craig Pawson, just down in front of us. And it's clearly asking for an explanation. But that's it. Red card, Van Dyke, Liverpool down to 10 men. To the naked eye. It looks as if the referee got that one right. There was no one behind there. He'd been rolled. He got far, far too close to his act. Now, what they will look at when they check this, which of course they obviously will check it, and the VAR. They'll see if there's any contact with the ball. If there's no contact with the ball, I don't think the referee can even consider changing his mind on this. But we will have to see what they see in the VAR. What's interesting here is that um, the ball did deflect away in the direction that yeah. Van Dijk was running. And, uh, and, and Van Dijk is still on the field here. And the referee is being uh, spoken to by yeah. the video assistant referee. And that conversation continues. Stuart, At Stuart Atwell is the uh, the video assistant referee, and uh, and it's it's confirmed. They've backed up John Brooks's decision on the field, and Van Dyke has been told to leave the pitch. Jurgen Klopp turns away, strokes his chin. It's a free kick to Newcastle, just outside the penalty area. Van Dyke still hasn't gone. I mean, John Brooks says and points towards the halfway line and says to Van Dyke, you have to go. What an incredible few minutes this has been for Liverpool in this game. I mean, they've seen some little bit of danger in that back line and Newcastle have been right on to Virgil van Dyke got too close. When you've got a player of these acts quality there, if you get too close and he rolls you, you are in trouble. You can't actually take a chance. Again, it's naked eye from us. When I sent it first there, the first look at it from a distance away, we're on the halfway line, but it's a good 50 yards away from us. It looked to me as if it should be a red card. It's a big, big call. It's a brave call for the referee to make it, but 
They've had plenty of looks at it. That's what VAR's there for, and he's not even had a look. Well, Liverpool, you'd think, would have to make a change. Joe Gomez is on the bench, so so no so no Canate, no Canate today because of injury. Joel Matip's come in for his first appearance of the season. Barely played over the course of the latter part of last season, and uh, and Liverpool are going to make a change, but. Newcastle with this free kick first of all so Newcastle with a free kick edge of the area left of centre and a chance here well Kieran Trippier is the obvious free kick taker Cher is there as well he can strike one well it must surely it must be Trippier it's quite close for Trippier isn't it it's about 21 yards out but the, the few minutes that Liverpool have had just now John you know to lose a goal lose a player and not just a player you know the main player at the back centre back they're going to lose him for a game after this as well and they've got a free kick 21 yards out how much else can it get in these last few minutes for Liverpool lose the captain as well he's gone uh, so he'll be suspended for the Aston Villa game next weekend which uh, is on the Sunday afternoon free kick then for Newcastle Trippier and Cher in discussions as I say just left of centre that Cher takes it low into the wall blocks Tonali he shoots and it's taken a flick off a Liverpool player on the edge of the area and that is a corner to Newcastle why, why are they taking their time to bring Gomez on I mean he has taken his time I understand that you need to think about it a little bit it's a corner kick against you now you need a little bit of height in there <laughs> you're going to make that decision you're going you've got to make it quite quick so it's a corner from the left so Newcastle took the lead in the 26th minute I think it was the 28th minute that Van Dijk was sent off Trippier with a corner it's a deep one to the back post Burn heads it across and Allison's able to drop on it and catch it in the six yard box towering header at the back post and Allison slips and falls over as he delivers this downfield Trippier got his head to it bounced off the arm of Salah but referee Brooks allows the play to continue because Newcastle have it with Paul John what would people have said to, about Jurgen Klopp there had they scored from that header at the back post a clear header for Dan Burn there when they hadn't made a change in their centre back down just now he quite moved quick in these situations it could have been 2-0 down as well as Amanda what's interesting is well, it's by the way I say that just now Jurgen Klopp shouting and bawling at the officials maybe they didn't have the paperwork ready well it could have been that doesn't matter what you do these days you've got to get the paperwork Correct. end up playing the ball over the top but he's overhit that and Newcastle should have it in their own right back position Pope clears it away out of play near the halfway line uh, more news from St Mirren what is it Gavin Wallace it's a last minute penalty and when I say last minute John it's 90 it's plus 10 is the penalty VAR check Alex Kogic had slid in but handled inside the box and then we had another check on VAR for Miofsky's penalty for a double touch but it stood and we're still playing at 90 plus 12 here in Paisley St Mirren 2 Aberdeen 2 it's a 2-2 two -two there and the uh, change is made Gomez is on and it is Luis Diaz who is being substituted that's a difficult call and it's Luis Diaz who has been withdrawn with John, what 32 minutes on the clock difficult call it's ever been this get the winger off <laughs> <laughs> that's the former winger Pat Nevin and uh, Newcastle won Liverpool nil the Dutch Grand Prix is over and just to warn you just to warn you we are going to uh, to go there if we get the chance, but I know that some people like to avoid it. Although, as I always think, if you uh, don't want to know the result of live sport, why would you listen to Five Live? <laughs> but anyway, here is Liverpool coming forward. Robertson playing the ball back in field. Indo back out to the left-hand side. And then it comes back to the Japanese. OK, hopefully those who don't want to know have uh, tuned out and it was won by Max Verstappen Liverpool again near the edge of the penalty area Salah now turn Gakpo nice footwork out to the left hand side ball crossed in by Robertson but Pope comes and makes the catch above all of those heads whether in a red shirt or a black and white and the score Newcastle United 1 Liverpool nil, and Liverpool down to 10 men after the sending off a straight red card for their captain Virgil van Dijk for uh, what was deemed by referee John Brooks to be a foul on Isaac on the edge of the penalty area when he went to challenge for the ball but uh, it was deemed to be the denial of a clear goal scoring opportunity and uh, a red card so Gomez is on and here's Gordon 
the goal scorer for Newcastle two minutes before Van Dyke was sent off down the left Joe Linton Joe Linton then in field and then Butman takes it to his right and Cher now Cher wanders forward with the ball into the Liverpool half lovely ball from Bruno Gimaranch out to the right hand side to Trippier Trippier's ball deflected into the area Tenali's onto this but the defender was there as well to block it behind it was Endo actually who was back in there to block it behind for a corner to Newcastle from the right uh, in the Super League it has finished Huddersfield 21 leads 12 corner for Newcastle from the right we're going to go back to St Mirren in a moment I think it may be over now we'll find out in a moment but uh, Trippier to take this from the right hand side raises both arms plays it low in towards the near post Almiron gives it back to Trippier Trippier up against Robertson then clips it in towards the back post that's headed away by Alexander Arnold it comes out oh what a save from Allison! taken down and volleyed by Gordon I think it was who pulled it down and hit the volley and Allison diving was left somehow kept that out honestly that is one of the best saves you will see this season anywhere at all I thought it was definitely going into the back of the net there he has leveled it he's gone to his left hand side hit it off the crossbar that always makes it look a little bit better as well what a great save corner again then Trippier into the near post headed out then a, a volley back in by uh, a backing away Almiron but that dropped wide of the post and behind and it is a goal kick and and live well Allison's kept them in it though. he has and there are so many things now live to have to get this together they've put themselves back into what looks a little bit more like a 4-4-1 four, four, formation Salah's playing up front so they'll still be hard to break down the problem is they should be hard to break down the Newcastle I mean, they are, they're loving this they see they see blood they see that red blood there and they want to go for it and for all the fact that they're, they're a goal up and the fact that the captain's off Trent Alexander's walking a tightrope at the moment and every time Alexander, uh, Anthony Gordon gets the ball he looks as if he's going to do it Alexander there's lots of problems just now for Jurgen Klopp to figure out he just wants to get to half time that was Gordon with the volley there wasn't it that, I actually uh, thought it was Armidon but we don't well, got with the, the initial effort yeah, that's what I mean. that, that was saved by Alisson onto the post the difficulty is we actually haven't got television screens today which uh, is because because of the torrential rain earlier they decided for safety reasons not to put the televisions out ball in from the right hand side from Trippier but that's all the way across into the full back position hence the reason we've not actually seen the uh, the Van Dyke challenge on uh, Isaac that led to his red card other than with the naked eye Bruno Gimmerich playing it in Allison comes and gets the punch comes out to Trippier on the right back to the edge of the area shot from Almiron in the D left footed but he sent that wide and high well wide actually and a goal kick to uh, to Liverpool do you know what Jurgen Klopp just now he is very very wide at this point in time they cannot get out at the moment there's chances being created half chances but full chances as well and at the moment they're just trying to slow it down but you cannot do that in the modern game because you'll get a yellow card and Alisson's taking a chance there although the referee would be a brave man to Start sending off more players just now having sent off the captain of Liverpool. Pat, you're right, it was Almiron with the shot that was saved by Allison onto the uh, onto the post. So good spot. Good spot that. I must say I'm looking forward to seeing the, the challenge again. Yeah. I would like to I would like to see, you know, if if indeed Van Dyke got any of the ball with that challenge, as it was sent forward to Isaac now for Newcastle, but he can't keep that in sprinting out to the right hand side. And it is uh, a throw into Liverpool halfway inside their own half. And of course, Isaac's thinking, well, great fun now. I've been playing against Van Dyke, and now I've got Matip and Gomez, and that's by a long way, a long way away from first choice centre backs that Liverpool want on there. And when he's thinking, get the ball to me as much as you can, I, I feel they'll get the pace of those players. He's running into really interesting areas, almost got away there. And as we speak, there's been. I'm trying to see who that was. Gakpo. Down. Gakpo's gone down. Yeah, um, a long Gakpo free kick to Liverpool, ten yards inside their own half. It just looks shaky that back line just now, doesn't it? For Liverpool, very, very shaky indeed. And well, I say that Isaac's wanting to get the ball every time. Anthony Gordon, he wants the ball every single time. I can tell you for sure, Callum Wilson's sitting down there thinking, "Get me on here." I think there's chances. Well, in this match last season, infamously, really, from a Newcastle point of view, Newcastle had. A man sent off in the first half, Nick Pope, who then missed the League Cup final. And uh, in this fixture this year, in the first half, I made it in the 28th minute. 
the Liverpool captain Virgil van Dijk has been sent off and it's Newcastle 1 Liverpool 0 as the ball is played back to Alisson and uh, then a foul on Endo by Bruno Guimarães and a free kick to Liverpool in the middle of their own half. Uh, so the full-time news on St Mirren, Aberdeen, Gavin Wallace. Yes, St Mirren 2, Aberdeen 2, uh, John Goals from Johnny Hayes to open the scoring on uh, 42 minutes, 25-yard free kick that breezed by a full box, including the St Mirren goalkeeper. Parity restored on 59 with Kelty from a penalty. Alex Grieve on 76, he was the beneficiary of a great through ball and then all the drama came deep, deep into stoppage time. 90 plus 10 was the time that Bjorjan Miofsky stepped up to fire home and salvage a point for a penalty. VAR in so much controversy today but uh, St Mirren up to second it finishes St Mirren 2 Aberdeen 2 and Dundee 1 Hearts 0 was the final score Liverpool played up to Gakpo on the edge of the area indecision from Pope came so far then went back defenders were there though and Gakpo is dispossessed and then Joe Linton low lovely pass economically into the path of Gordon inside his own half and Gordon takes it over the halfway line now halfway inside the Liverpool half, Almiron on the edge of the area, tries to work it back to Trippier, but Liverpool have now got men back. But Gordon running free there centrally. You know, the space is opening up, Liverpool with the 10 men, and Gordon certainly found space. But Gagpo could have been in at the other end for Liverpool. 1 0 Newcastle lead, half time approaching, round about four minutes to go. We'll have more uh, from the Netherlands on the Grand Prix at half time by the way and all of the details will be available on the Checkered Flag podcast via BBC Sounds all of the interviews all of the analysis with our team who are there at the track here's Endo passing it forward to Sobos Lai got a shove in the back from Byrne it's a real test now for Liverpool this unbeaten in their first two matches the draw at Chelsea the win against Bournemouth but right up against it now against Newcastle with their noses in front here at St James's Park, Newcastle, who here on their home ground under Eddie Howe have lost precisely four of 34 home matches. Although two of them were against Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool, two of the four. But if Liverpool come out of this with a win, they'll have done well. Well, they, they've, they've calmed it down a little bit now. This has been really intelligent from Liverpool. They were under so much pressure. They were wide open, as you said, before them. and. Gordon got the ball in the midfield there. It was just a poor decision for Almiron. They should have got a shot away there. So what they've done, they've tried to calm it down a little bit, hold the, the ball, they get themselves some sort of foothold in the game. But they don't look as if they're getting forward that often. Just that one opportunity where they went offside with Gak, uh, they weren't offside with Gakpo, even though it was close. Uh, Botman is just to have been fouled by Sobos Lai, ended up on his back on the ground, so a free kick, which Newcastle take quickly. Cher strikes it forward into the path of Trippier Almiron is there at close quarters in fact Trippier just allows the ball to roll and Almiron takes it on then gives it back to Trippier and back centrally Bruno Guimaraes Newcastle now dominating the possession against the 10 men Tenari comes in just taps it back towards the halfway line and then Dan Byrne rolls it down the left hand side to Gordon so once again we've got Gordon against Alexander Arnold but Sobos Lai gets back in there and helps out his right back uh, Bruno Gimbranc with the path over the top that's headed away by Gomez bounces out and Endo is bundled over by Almiron and uh, that is a free kick and uh, and the referee is going to speak to Almiron and I don't think it is going to be a yellow card I thought perhaps for accumulation of fouls correct. but it's not you're absolutely spot on John that's what it is you'll enter now Gone in through the back there, but there's been a couple of shoves. You know, it's the shove earlier on there, just in the back, off the ball. The referee spotted it as well, and it's ex he's done exactly the right thing. He's like, I'm seeing what you're doing. You're trying to build, bully the op opposition. They're, they're niggly little fouls, but they're still fouls. And if he, he does another one, certainly he's, uh, he's definitely going to get in the book. So I'm sure Eddie Howe's noticed that as well that Joe Linton's possibly going to go to yellow soon if he's not careful. Liverpool playing it out from the back. Good touch on the edge of the box from McAllister though to pass it to Matip and Matip then flights the ball over the top and and Newcastle well, Burn is totally out of position so Alexander Arnold is able to take it on and pass the ball right across the edge of the box and Salah is there and Salah rolls it to his left to Robertson and Robertson with the orange flashes on his boots back centrally comes to McAllister McAllister just takes it on might have been pulled back by Almiron he was the referee just allowed that to go to see if there would be an advantage 
but he was tugged back and it's a free kick to Liverpool in the middle of uh, the Newcastle half. So 1-0 Newcastle lead. Uh, in the one-day cup, Worcestershire needs 307 to win and Worcestershire 215 for four after 40.2 overs. So free kick for Liverpool here, Pat. Yeah, um, very good scene. Trent Alexander-Arnold going for it again. You know, he's put under a lot of pressure and you wouldn't be surprised in much of the day two tonight that you have a close look at him, you know, negatively and positively. But he broke away there. It's a shame though, because Gakpo was through the middle. He didn't play the ball first time. Had he done that, it might have been half a chance for Liverpool. Well, this is the uh, best part of 35 yards out. And actually, Sobos Lai is going to go for goal, which he does, but uh, he tried the, the Ronaldo-style free kick. He got right underneath it. He was looking for the wobble down, but it, but it dipped well over the crossbar, probably by four or five yards. I think, so, kick. I think it's ball on, John. I think it did get the wobble, and it did dip. Sadly, it was different from about 10 yards over to about five yards over the crossbar, but... You understand that's another little half chance a little opportunity this is not beyond Liverpool yet to get back into this game I think that period just after we lose Van Dijk and lose the goal it could have imploded it looked as if it might implode but at the moment Liverpool have just got a little bit of a foothold back which will relieve their supporters no end well this is the Premier League on 5 Live and the World Service from BBC as Radio and we're watching McAllister who's been fouled by Joe Linton and uh, it is a free kick to Liverpool, just nudged over. He's already had the warning. He's going to get away with it. And Jurgen Klopp, I think you can imagine, Jurgen Klopp has come across again to Craig Pawson, the fourth official. It's only a free kick. And Joe Linton now plays it towards the edge of the area. And uh, played back by Botman to Pope with Salah not far away. Been a couple of dicey moments for Liverpool. It's all, for Newcastle at the back, it's almost as if they've got Liverpool in their heads as Tonali trips Gakpo and that's a free kick to Liverpool 10 yards or more inside the Newcastle half do you know that's the psychology we're talking about before the game it's Liverpool you, you, you just wonder if it was anyone else here or most other teams here Newcastle will say right <laughs> we're going for it now <laughs> we're going to hammer this we've got an extra man we're playing well we're creating chances but they seem to have stepped off a little bit now no, don't take anything away from Liverpool but they really seem to get a bit nervy Newcastle Robertson to swing in the free kick Diagonally, Gomez was after it actually, but it's come off the back of the Newcastle man who was there with him, Joe Linton, and bounces behind for a Liverpool corner late in the half. So it's 1 0. Liverpool, who will be playing well over an hour of this match with 10 men after Van Dyke's sending off. So a corner from the right. They'd absolutely love Liverpool to. Uh, to force in an equaliser here right at the end of the first half in the in the four minutes of added time that has been signalled Alexander Arnold to take the outswinger his corner towards the back post that has gone all the way through Salah in the end Tonali put in the challenge on him Salah was appealing to the referee and now uh, on the edge of the box excellent work from Sobos lying between two Newcastle men and then McAllister goes down on the edge of the area, rather theatrically. Referee Brooks is not buying that. And Tonali's able to take it away. Sobos lies chasing him out to the right-hand side. Change of feet to go past Gomez. Then down goes Tonali. And he does get the free kick. That was so clever, wasn't it, by Tonali? He had four players around him. It looks as if he's going to lose it on every single occasion there. But he's strengthened the ball, obviously, the skill as well. But his balance was brilliant. And he eventually gets the ball out and calms things down and... At this point in time, you think Newcastle will be... They're not under massive pressure, but I think they'll be happy to get in 1-0, you know, get the nerves settled, and Eddie Howe kind of a little bit of chat with the team and say, that here's where the weaknesses are. You've got to make good use of them again. Another big Rugby Union World Cup warm-up match going on today. France 7, Australia 5 is the latest score there. And in a, a fortnight's time, the Rugby Union World Cup will be underway. In fact, now France 13, Australia 5 and uh, comprehensive commentary and coverage from BBC Radio on 5 Live and Sports Extra during the, the weeks of that tournament. And indeed, actually, the normal Rugby Union daily turns in, uh, weekly turns into the Rugby Union daily from Tuesday. So every day. But a throw into Liverpool halfway inside their own half in added time. And we uh, have had the four minutes plus. Certainly going to be lots to talk about after this match, even just after the first half. And there is the half-time whistle. And Newcastle lead Liverpool 
by one goal to nil. The goal well taken from the former Evertonian, Anthony Gordon, after Trent Alexander-Arnold's little mistake let him in. And within probably two minutes of that, Virgil van Dijk was sent off and Liverpool were down to 10 then. And Joel Matip is just having a word with referee Brooks as he leaves the field. Andy Robertson likewise, but the players running directly towards us and down out of sight underneath the uh, the roof of the dugouts to the dressing rooms. Pat Nevin. Huge opportunity now for Newcastle. You know, they, everything they would want to happen, they've got the goal. <laughs> got an extra man now. They're actually playing pretty well. Will you ever have a better chance to go and take the three points off of Liverpool? Yes, Liverpool might come out with a slightly different attitude and idea in the second half now, and they have got quality players, and it is only one goal, so it's still in the balance. But Newcastle, they've played well, they've seen what the weaknesses are, they've made good use of those weaknesses, particularly in behind the full-back area, which we all know about Liverpool. But the second half, have they got the bravery, have they got the psychology to keep it going? That's the big thing we need to find out. So here on a very cloudy, grey, overcast Tyneside, it is Newcastle United 1, Liverpool 0 at half-time. Thank you, John. Pat, have you had a chance to look again at the uh, Virgil van Dijk challenge that well, saw him sent off there's, his tackle? There's a very good reason yeah, Ali, go on, why John. we haven't been able to do that. Yeah. And, and that is that they've not been able to put out the television screens for us uh, in the commentary positions for safety reasons because of the torrential rain before the match. So everything that's happened in the first half, we've yeah. effectively had one chance let, to see. Let, well, let, let me try and describe it to you then, because I, I've been watching the game on a big screen here in the studio. Virgil van Dijk, obviously goes to play the ball he, he with the instep of his right foot before he gets to the ball he catches Isak and then inadvertently his foot then goes onto the ball which is why the ball is then cleared to the left but Pat the first thing he does is connect with Isak and send Isak to the floor so, so to my mind that is a foul yeah no it's a foul and I've, I've, I've no great doubt the way you describe it there it's a foul the question remains is where Isak was he looked to me as if he was turning Van Dijk Have Van Dijk got too close you get that close and you're going to be turned and you fill the player then that's you I don't think there's any great argument about it mm. however I would like to see it again because sometimes in these situations I have to slow it down but from the naked eye from where I was my thoughts were if he doesn't connect with the ball first yeah he has to go okay he that didn't was my thoughts on he it. didn't he didn't pat john thank you very much indeed go and get some half-time refreshment you can make your own minds up tonight match of the day half past 10 bbc one uh, you can have a look at the virgil van dyke challenge sam has got in touch uh, on the socials trent book for being shoved van dyke sent off for getting the ball are we going to get an explanation for this one sean doesn't agree uh, he asked whether it was karma for trent alexander arnold not getting the second yellow card earlier on in the game which is true there could have possibly been uh, a second yellow there so Newcastle leading 10 man Liverpool by a goal to nil at half time second half commentary uh, on the way in the Scottish Premiership today St Mirren were held to a two all draw against Aberdeen in the end meaning they missed the chance to go top of the table it finished Dundee one hearts nil uh, Blackburn beat Watford by a goal to nil in the championship we're going to get reaction shortly from what was a thrilling match at Bramall Lane where it finished 2-1 to Manchester City uh, against Sheffield United Aston Villa were 3-1 winners at Burnley earlier on today and we're going to be in Budapest shortly for the final day of the World Athletics Championships but first here's the news on 5 Live with Carl Hartley Listen on BBC Sounds This is BBC Radio 5 Live Thanks Alistair Russian investigators say genetic testing has confirmed the head of the Wagner mercenary group was among 10 people killed in a plane crash on Wednesday Authorities still haven't said what brought down the plane Evgeny Prigozhin was uh, travelling in the Met Police is investigating a possible data breach after unauthorised access was gained to the systems of one of its suppliers. Scotland Yard say the company held names, ranks, forters, vetting levels and pay for officers and staff. An internal investigation has been launched by Spain's Football Federation after its sexual violence protocol was activated. It comes as the Federation's president, Luis Rubiales, has been suspended by FIFA after kissing forward Jenny Hermoso on the lips after Spain's World Cup win. And a private equity firm has made a £90 million bid for the retailer Wilco, which is in danger of closure. M2 Capital says if its offer is accepted, it would guarantee the firm's 12,000 jobs in England, Scotland and Wales for two years. This is Five Live Sports. Listen on BBC Sounds. 
Yes, welcome back. I'm Alistair Bruce Ball. Loads to get through at half time before we take you back to St James's Park for second half commentary of Newcastle against Liverpool. Newcastle leading Liverpool by a goal to nil. Virgil van Dijk has been sent off Anthony Gordon uh, with the goal. So, first stop, uh, Lords. It's uh, finals day in the 100. Earlier, Southern Brave won the women's competition. Third time lucky for them. They beat the Northern Superchargers by 34 runs. And next, it's the men's final between the Oval Invincibles and the Man. Manchester Originals, it's going to be watched by Henry Moran. Yeah, it's been uh, quite a moving day in many ways. Anya Shrubsole has waved goodbye to professional cricket uh, six years ago. She was part of the England side that won the World Cup here at Laws today. Third time lucky for the Southern Brave as she captains their side to victory over the Northern Superchargers. They won quite comfortably in the end by 34 runs. Next up, Manchester Originals against the Oval Invincibles. Joss Butler looking to repeat the form from last night in the Eliminator. 82 he scored yesterday. He'll be up against the likes of Sam Curran. That gets underway in around about 35 minutes from now. Thanks, Henry. Should be a cracker commentary of it ball by ball on Radio 5 Sports Extra from quarter to six this evening. Manchester City made it three wins out of three at the start of this Premier League season. Top of the table. They uh, didn't make light work of beating Sheffield United 2-1, though. Jaden Bogle scored an equaliser uh, for the home team after a Carl Walker mistake before Rodri earned a late winner for City in that one. Here's the Manchester City defender Ruben Diaz with Ian Dennis. What a finish for a game that you'd control throughout. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a lot of emotion in the end. Um, well, obviously, uh, more than anything, uh, happy to, to get the three points. Uh, that's what we came here to do. Uh, we, it quickly got complicated when we, get, we, we got the goal. But uh, also, in a season, and uh, as complicated as the, as the seasons uh, get more and more every year, uh, it's important when these moments happen, uh, when you when a tough moment comes uh, at you and you're able to react. And uh, it was the Roger one, we had the Julian one just before. And uh, I guess that in those, I don't know, split of minutes, uh, it was so quick uh, and we had two, three chances. I think that reaction of the team is something to take as a very big positive. And the fact that even though it was a tough goal to, to concede and uh, spe especially uh, with the game almost finishing, uh, the teams quickly uh, changed the mindset to go to let's go after it again. So three wins out of three for Manchester City, three defeats for Sheffield United. Despite that, the players and their manager Paul Heckingbottom received a standing ovation from their fans. It would be nice to get a point rather than a standing ovation, though. But uh, yeah, we can't let that detract away from the performance. Yeah, we're, we're a work in progress. It's, it's tough at the minute. We, if we could have got to that moment where we're making a sub still be nil-nil, I would have really fancied us. So to concede just before we were going to make the changes was uh, was tough. But you know, to know what, to go one down to a team like City and get back in it, uh, yeah, shows the spirit and shows the character. Did you dare to dream when the, the equaliser went in, thinking it could be a precious point? Yeah, of course, of course, because we had besides the first goal, um, stood strong against everything they were throwing at us. Um, in good positions, managed the game managed the game well and, and retained quite a fair degree of control in the game, even though City had a lot of the ball in our half. And we made the mistake on the far side, but then uh, the kick in the teeth, if you like, is when the ball comes in, it's actually Phil Foden who miscontrols and it drops straight in Rodri's path. So sometimes, you know, it's not your day. As the Sheffield United boss Paul Heckingbottom speaking to Ian Dennis, Manchester City winning the game by two goals to one. Elsewhere in the Premier League today, Aston Villa won 3-1 at Burnley. Matty Cash uh, scored two of the goals. The lines are open for 6.06. .06. Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton taking your calls as always. Number to dial 0808 uh, Robbie is here. Robbie, there is plenty to talk oh. about this evening, isn't there? Where, where, where do you want to start? Um, obviously, Aston Villa, um, great start to the season, as was West Ham start. Uh, obviously, today, Man City, um, you know, after um, Sheffield United equalising, then they get the winner through Rodri. What a player Rodri is. Is, yeah. is he the best six in the world, by the way? What a player he is. Um, and then this game, ABB, I've not heard the comms, I'm watching it on the TV, the yeah. big debate, was it a sending off? Well, well was it two sending off? First one, Alexander-Arnold. Um, the first booking was silly, um, obviously, but the new rule, um, you know, throwing the ball away. Mm. And then five minutes 50 uh, at the time on the on the clock, he puts his arm across Gordon. And I think that's a yellow. I, I think, agree. Therefore, that should have been a red. Yep. Um, obviously, John Brooks didn't um, see it sufficient, um, uh, the threshold of a second yellow. 
Um, so again, I think he got away with. And then the sending off. I think the big question, it's a foul. Yep. It's a foul from Van Dyke. And I've just seen the debate on the TV. Um, Jamie Carragher didn't think it was. Um, denial of a goal scoring opportunity. Um, Shea Given did. My opinion is that it's a foul. Um, it's outside the box. But I think that um, Van Dyke has denied um, the striker of a clear goal scoring opportunity because, mm. you know, there's nobody on the cover. He's trying to let it run across him. Um, is it was it Isak? Yeah, Isak. Yeah, Isak. Yeah, and so therefore it's a fa- it's a foul, and de- he's denied a clear goal scoring opportunity. Okay, uh, Robbie, What's I agree. I, well, listen, I agree with you on both. Do you think Chris will agree with you? Um, well, Chris, <laughs> listen. Obviously, uh, um, I think Chris has got to be worried about Celtic not denying clear goal scoring opportunities. Yeah. Um, um, but listen, Newcastle, I think value for money. They deserve the lead. Um, it's a big. I don't think they've won of the in 13 Correct. times against December against... December 2015 last time. Yeah, so so this is a big moment for Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. You know, Liverpool have done um, the double over Newcastle for the fa- last five seasons. Thanks, John Murray, for that stat. I was listening on the way in. Um, so this is a big moment for Newcastle. You know, people haven't tipped them to finish in the top four. Big moment this in Newcastle season already. You had a caller on last night, Robbie, who said, and obviously Newcastle fans said that they would be the closest challengers to Manchester City this season. Uh, oh, I still think Arsenal will be. Mm. Um, you know, we had lots of calls last night saying Chris is the problem. Um, which I, I heard totally those as well. Maybe, yeah, I'm sure you agreed with that as well. <laughs> He's always uh, part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, this is a big 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah. You know, if Newcastle don't win it, questions will be asked. This is this is now where they've got to put that record um, of, of the unwanted record of not winning in 13 years to bed. They've yeah. got this, this is a great opportunity. And if okay. they don't, questions will be asked. OK, Robbie, thank you. And you can ask your questions to Robbie and Chris this evening after the game. Second half commentary on the way. Robbie and Chris taking the calls. Lines are open, but you call now. 08085 909 693. After 6.06 tonight, it's going to be live coverage of the final day of the World Athletics Championships in Budapest. We're going to be bringing you commentary of the key races in Gordon's Smart Show from about 7 40 p.m. on Five Live and BBC Sounds this evening, and Kath Merry and Alison Kirbishley, uh, who are out there covering it for us. More medal chances this evening for Great Britain. There is. Every night there's been medal chances. It's been brilliant. Seven medals so far, which equals the amount that they won in Eugene at the World Championships last year. It's 36 degrees. It is the last day. We've got both teams, the men and women, in the 4 by 4 finals. Morgan Lake lines up in the women's high jump final. But the women's 800 metres, a rematch of US champion, world champion, Olympic champion, Othing Mo against Keely Hodgkinson, Alison Kirbishley, could be, on this last day, one of the races of this championships. Whoever scripted this timetable did very yes. well because it, it, for me, it's the race of the championship. You know, these girls could go head to head over 10 races and you will probably see a different scenario each race. Um, gold, silver, bronze are here from Eugene, as you said last year. Gold, silver, bronze and fourth, who was Gemma Riki, are here from Tokyo. Mary Mora is certainly a different character than she was last year when she's finished in, in third, I think Mo has hardly raced this year. Really, they've all kept their cards close to their chest. And it's going to be who grabs this race by the scruff of, scruff of its neck and takes control because it is going to be a, 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 a nail biter. It really will be. Want to look forward to more medals hopefully to come this evening in Budapest. Thank you, Kath. Thank you, Ali. Very much looking forward to it. I can see the Liverpool players out first back on the pitch at St James's Park, taking it back there very shortly. I can tell you earlier today, Red Bull's Max Verstappen won a record equaling ninth F1 race in a row. It was a heavily rain-affected Dutch Grand Prix. Aston Martin's Fernando Alonso came second ahead of Alfa Tauri's Pierre Gasly in third. There'll be more reaction on the Checkered Flag podcast, which will be available later on this evening uh, on BBC Sounds. One game in Rugby League Super League today as well. Huddersfield Giants beat Leeds Rhinos by 21 points to 12. The Football Daily uh, podcast available via BBC Sounds featuring Neda Manua is going to be a very good listen for you later on this evening. Uh, and tomorrow morning, as always, always the best reaction analysis debate uh, on the big games, the big stories. And there are none bigger today than Newcastle against Liverpool at St James's Park. Liverpool down to 10 men. Virgil van Dijk sent off. The home team heading back out onto the pitch. That is why you can hear a thunderous roar. We'll take you back there uh, in the company of Pat Nevin and John Murray. Thank you, Ali. Yes, welcome back here. 
to Tyneside, to St James's Park, as the Newcastle players come out to the sound of Bladen races. The Liverpool 10 men are out there already. Uh, no changes, so Newcastle, Pulp, Trippier, Cher, Botman and Byrne, Tonali, Bruno Gimmerainch and Joe Linton, and then Almiron, Isak and goal scorer Gordon. And Liverpool now, with Alisson in goal, then the back four of Alexander-Arnold Matip, substitute Gomez on for the red-carded Van Dijk and Robertson, Soboslai, Endo and McAllister, Salah and Gakpo. Pat Nevin, former Scotland international, watching with me here. And Pat, you have now had a chance to see the uh, Van Dyke sending off. Yeah, I mean, it happens so incredibly quickly, but Van Dyke gets himself in a terrible position, as I say. Got far too tight, had been turned, and it was all about, you know, did he get the touch on uh, the player first or the ball? And a uh, note there is some debate on TV about that. My looking at it is, Virgil, you got it wrong. And. Uh, that's why it had to be a red card, and I, I was not surprised that they didn't look at it again in the VAR. Yeah, and the and the VAR backed up the uh, decision of John Brooks, the referee. So Newcastle United won, Liverpool nil as the second half begins, and uh, Newcastle with possession, playing from left to right as we look here, from uh, low down behind where the two managers are standing. Newcastle attacking towards the the Gallagate end, and it is. Fabian Scher, the Swiss central defender, long right-footed pass from him, but Matip gets there first, clears to the halfway line, burn, then to Gordon, Gordon against Alexander-Arnold again, takes him on into the full-back position, gets the ball over to the near post, and Gomez diving in, just got there for Liverpool with Isaac behind him, waiting for it on the edge of the six-yard box. This is becoming a very, very difficult afternoon for Trent Alexander-Arnold, isn't it? He was on that yellow card early on, is at fault for the goal when it was goes uh, for the yeah for the goal when it goes through the balls. He's covered himself, not going in the first half, but he's not stopping. The cross is going in. Simple thing you need to do. Anthony Gordon to some degree has got him in toast at the moment. And here is Gordon again. Newcastle getting the ball to Gordon as soon as they can. He's running at Alexander Arnold again. He goes past him to the byline, cuts it back. Isaac on the fall hits the shot at the near post from the edge of the six yard box didn't get the power on it and just really scuffed it through for Allison to go down to his right to make the save. Yeah. Now he scores that goal but it's a through ball originally by Gordon at least to the sending off as well. And I don't forget that and he's he's flying at the moment, he's loving it out there and I don't think Trent has. Uh, Gakpo though running for Liverpool beyond the centre circle in between Tonali and Joe Linton who sandwich him and bring him down and that's a free kick to, uh, to Liverpool so that is another that's another Joe Linton foul. I have to say, I can, I can hear the surprise in your voice, and I will echo it. I mean, I, I, Liverpool fans are way up miles to the left-hand side there. I think they're in disbelief there that uh, Joe Linton, after all his physical play so far, and the way the referee has got his cards out so far, hasn't brought one out for Joe Linton. It's a real surprise. Alexander Arnold to take this free kick. Lines open for 606 on Five Live now. The World Service are with us too, listening from all corners of the globe. And uh, Alexander Arnold takes this free kick over everyone inside the penalty area and it bounces harmlessly through for a goal kick. So, yes, if you have just joined us, Alexander Arnold could easily have been sent off early in the match for a second yellow card, having received one already just minutes earlier for delaying the restart. So that's a talking point for 606, let alone the Van Dyke sending off. 08 085 909 693 to talk to Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton. And just to let you know, John, I did see that as well down there. And that was quite harsh because he's, he's rolled back on towards the dugout and he's just threw the ball backwards towards the field. And it's one of those ones where it's not an obvious throw it away and try to waste a huge amount of time. It was an incredibly harsh yellow card and I've also had a chance to see what was allegedly an elbow by uh, Trent alexander Arnold. Nothing in that at all. Nothing in that. So you can understand why there wasn't a second yes. yellow. Yeah. And uh, and also we did feel that perhaps Gordon had pushed Alexander off, oh, Arnold, Arnold off the field in the first instance, which led to that yellow card. Anyway, we will, all things being well, be hearing live from Jurgen Klopp on Five Live during the course of 606 and Eddie Howe as well, as well as all the athletics as well. There'll be live athletics from Budapest 
during the course of 606 and beyond. Here's Tonali playing the ball out to the left-hand side. This time it's Joe Linton out there. Joe Linton taking on Alexander Arnold, crossing right foot. It's gone all the way to the back post where Almiron wastefully on his left foot balloons that high over the crossbar and it lands a quarter of the way up the Gallagate end in amongst dozens and dozens of black and white striped shirts. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give him his due. The ball was bouncing, you know, and it's, it's almost it's bounced so high it was like a volley when it came to him. But you're right, it's on his left foot there. He, you don't lash at that one, you just try and side foot it. Well, he did try and side foot it, but as you said, it went halfway up the Gallagher end. But once again, all the trouble coming down Liverpool's right hand side. And that time it was Joe Linton that went past uh, Trent Alexander Arnold. It's a tough time for the England fullback. Yep, and the, and the crucial thing being that he's on the yellow card, that early yellow card, and he's up against a flying Anthony Gordon, who has scored what's his first goal of the season. But uh, Anthony Gordon, who was the player of the tournament at the Euro under 21s as England won it in Georgia at the end of last season. Free kick for Liverpool and a yellow card for Kieran Trippier. It was a, it was a late one on uh, Alexis McAllister who stayed down. So now the, the Newcastle captain is yellow carded. Yeah, and it's not a great surprise. A lot of pressure on the referee to do something at some point in time because the Liverpool players and the fans and the manager are fuming. They feel as if they've been very hard done to under the pressure the referee's under just now. Obviously, these fans have been so excited, but you know, it's, it's almost a case of leveling it up slightly there. Liverpool 1-0 down. Andy Robertson taking a long while over the taking of this free kick, but Liverpool are losing the match. I don't know whether that gets you any grace from the referees if you're if you're actually only wasting your own time probably not well the thing is he panicked slightly robert's now because oh he worried at the last second thing like yellow. Yellow card. they just leathered the ball aimlessly didn't they uh, in the rugby union world cup warm-up match france now leading australia by 16 points to five and uh trippia up to the right hand side it's half time in the france australia game and england uh, newcastle with the ball at the back, Trippier turning it all the way back to, to goalkeeper Pope behind him. Newcastle have conceded one goal in each of their two matches so far and uh, had lost that clean sheet habit that they had in the first half of last season. Here's Tonali now, Tonali wriggling away from Endo and Tonali rolling the ball forward down the right hand side for Almiron but Robertson did well, came away with the ball then Robertson over hit it, bounced into Trippier and then bounces off the field for a throw in on the halfway line. So we have to take this. Jurgen Klopp is uh, is rather animatedly sort of well, he's almost dancing from side to side on the edge of the pitch, and I think he had words for Tonali, who had gone down. Yeah. Clearly, Jurgen Klopp felt that he was making more out of a challenge than he should have done. Jurgen's trying really hard to stay calm at the moment, and it's, it's, it must be very very difficult for him. But he's almost like a caged animal well, down there, that, isn't he? In sent off twice last season and uh, and he was he's been warned about managers behavior but this is testing his patience as Gomez passes the ball from the back but under pressure Newcastle back in possession does feel that if Newcastle could find a second goal then Liverpool wouldn't be able to come back from that with 10 men but we'll see John they've been very intelligent about it when Newcastle get the ball here again along and they're not going forward quickly they're just holding at the back as if to say to Liverpool, come on, we won nil up. I know you get 10 men, but you need to come and close us down. You need to get, develop a little bit of space for us by coming out towards us. So, you know, when you're playing against 10 men, you play it wide, you play it quickly, you tire the opposition out, and then you drag them out. It's it's almost copybook, it's textbook with the way they're doing it just now. Newcastle win a throw in on the left hand side. Byrne takes it back into the Newcastle back line. Now out to the right hand side, just down to our right in front of us, Almiron moving in field at pace, but Liverpool players with him, so he goes back to share on the halfway line, then Trippier with a touch, Bruno Gimmerange uh, turns away from Endo, leaves the Japanese on the ground, and now Bruno Gimmerange has space to take it on towards the edge of the area, here's Gordon, Gordon up against Alexander-Arnold, onto his right foot, shoots from the angle, but straight at Alisson, who's able to hold the ball into his green jersey. Exactly what I was describing seconds before, Pulling Liverpool out, dragging them out, dragging them out. Endo comes out, gets a little bit frustrated, gets turned by Gimenez. His turn takes four Liverpool players out of the play there. You can't afford to do that when you're already a man down. So 
Well, at the moment, Newcastle are playing this very well. Uh, Newcastle again, this time down the right-hand side with Isaac, but he runs out of pitch as McAllister puts in the challenge and it's a goal kick for Liverpool. The England captain is playing at the moment, his second Bundesliga match for Bayern Munich, and he scored against Augsburg. So Bayern Munich leading Augsburg by two goals to nil. Uh, Gareth Southgate names his England squad on Thursday. So it's a big day Thursday, the England squad is named. Uh, the uh, the Scotland match, the 150th anniversary heritage match, as well as the qualifier against Ukraine, and also Champions League draw, European draws on Thursday. We'll have news of that in drive on Five Live on Thursday afternoon. Newcastle with the ball near the edge of the Liverpool penalty area, but it bounces away out of play for a throw into Liverpool. The side definitely got to join them, got just now. Liverpool want to play it out from the back, but of course they're a man down. They can get closed down much, much easier. But what's your option? Play it long to your big centre forward, Mo Salah. <laughs> it's a really difficult situation to find themselves in just now, and they're getting closed down and losing the ball all the time when they try and play out. Yep, Nunez on the bench, obviously, for, for Liverpool, and Jota as well, after he was left out of the starting lineup today so that Liverpool could play with the three man midfield. Newcastle again down the left hand side. Joe Linton to Gordon, early cross this time. Tonali very nearly found himself a position there. He was going for that change of feet that he loves, but this time just inside the box it ran away from him and Liverpool were able to clear but Gakpo's caught in possession now Trippier's onto that Robertson passes it forward but passes it straight to share and Newcastle come again through the middle Tonali scoops it forward but Matip's going to be able to take that ball into his stride and pass it forward for Sobos Lai who went down rather easily against Burn but that is a free kick just look at it Jurgen Klopp knows the problem over there on the right hand side but what does he do how can he stop it almost every time except in the second half when Newcastle were down the left hand side they've got a cross in and it's you can't you need to stop that at some point you need to do something you need to get somebody to play in front of your fullback who's under such pressure just now because he's already on a yellow card and they're just targeting them now well there's a change coming for Liverpool uh, Jota I think double change and uh, we'll see them once they move away from out of the uh, the cover of the dugouts, Harvey Elliott coming on as well, so Harvey Elliott and Jota, Jurgen Klopp, as Pat Nevin has suggested, you know, feels as though he's, he's probably had to make a change because they're being pinned right in by Newcastle with the man advantage, as uh, Trippier plays it forward to Tonali, who's away down the right-hand side, he's away from Gomez, looks up, plays the ball across to the back post and Alexander-Arnold got there first, ahead of Joel Linton and Gordon and was able to steer it behind the far post for a corner. Yeah, and that was that brilliant covering there. There was nobody else there, but he got there. Fantastic piece of defending. Gordon takes a quick one to burn. Back to Gordon. Now Bruno Gimmerein set himself and drilled it goalwards, but got underneath it, and it flies away high over the top of the crossbar from the angle for a goal kick. So uh, the change is Endo is off after his full debut for Liverpool, his first start in the Premier League and uh, Gakpo also makes way so Diogo Jota coming on to join Salah up front and uh, yeah it'll be interesting to see how it, you know, it sorts itself out here because they need, it's interesting to bring on you know he, he actually holds the ball very well it's all about getting some possession and holding on to the ball a little bit but it's Liverpool you're a goal down you need to ask some questions and it looks to me as if they're going to try and put Jota up as far as they possibly can and obviously Salah, he's not going to be going back, you know, fighting back as a, de a defensive midfield player. So I'm trying to be brave about it. So Harvey Elliott playing as he, he likes to on the sort of right-hand side of the, the midfield three. So now you've got Soboslai and McAllister back in that position as uh, more defensive-minded, which is how they've played the first couple of matches of the season. And en Endo, I'll get a word from you on, on his... I mean, it's been a tough one for, for anyone coming in on a day like this when things have conspired against Liverpool. But generally, and the, the, the game kind of passed him by a little bit, you have to be honest about it. If you're listening to the commentary, you've hardly heard his name be mentioned. But for the mass, vast majority of that, that game, he's, he's been outnumbered in there. And certainly the Liverpool players don't seem to know what his best attributes are at the moment. But very, very early days. But it's a, of a baptism of fire for the Japanese. Yep, Newcastle 1, Liverpool 0. Now Tonali, forward towards Almiron. Now to the right-hand side to Trippier. Trippier, as Liverpool players 
Swarm back into position. Trippier plays it to Isaac, who flicks it back to Trippier. Now here's Tenali on the right-hand side. Black hair bobbing. Plays it infield, but beyond Bruno Gimarain, hence, hence the groans. And McAllister playing it forward to Soboslai. And now Newcastle have to get back into position. Soboslai plays it back out to the left-hand side. Diogo Jota into action for the first time. Looks to cross it, but Joe Linton actually arrives to uh, intercept and put it behind for a Liverpool corner and then asks the Newcastle fans in the Leeser's end to, to give it a bit of noise. Yeah. Corner Liverpool look. I mean, that's a great opportunity there. They should have a, a, certainly a shot on target at the end of that, but it just tells you it's only a goal. There's still every possibility. We've seen a game already earlier this afternoon that we thought was finished mm -hmm. and wasn't at 1-0. Yep. Sheffield United, Manchester City did win it in the end with Rodri's goal, we heard from him at half-time. So Soboslai then with the corner for Liverpool, swings it in to the edge of the six-yard box, Joe Linton got underneath that, great delivery from Soboslai from the corner, he took it like a free kick. And now uh, McAllister back to Soboslai and the Hungarian does well, gets his head to it, gets it down on the ground, away from Trippier, then to Jota. Jota tried to feed it back into the area to Soboslai, but Newcastle were able to to clear it away. Still not out of their own defensive third though, Bruno Gimaraes now challenged by McAllister and now Liverpool have got it back as a result of that but Salah loses out to Byrne, helped out by Elliot, might have been caught there by Joe Linton but Elliot actually jumped out of the way obligingly as the challenge came in and now Alexander-Arnold attacking down the right for Liverpool but the ball in is cleared by Botman and this is a rare spell of Liverpool pressure in the second half with just under half an hour of the match to go live here on BBC Radio on 5 Live and the World Service and BBC Sounds as well to listen to the live radio Matip to the edge of the penalty area then back to Soboslai again Salah to the right hand side little ball in from Alexander-Arnold to Elliot then back to the Liverpool man Alexander-Arnold his cross into the area that's cleared by Botman and Newcastle are able to clear it away, but Gomez then is impeded by Isaac as he was leaning forward and trying to head it forward, the Liverpool man, so that's a free kick to Liverpool. Changes have made a difference, haven't they? Massive difference. Talking about if you're down to 10 men, you still have to be able to hold on to the ball just before the changes. I was, I was saying you couldn't get out from the back, you were trying to pass out to the back. The only option was to play it long. Well, there's another option, which is get players in that midfield who can hold the ball. They've done that. What a difference it's made. Robertson to play this in for Liverpool, and it's headed goalwards by Gomez in a crowd of players. Black and white either side of him, stretch for it, but could only head it up and, and wide of the top left corner and actually you know it's probably worth making the point as Pat says still only one goal in it and there is only one goal in it because of a stupendous save really by Allison in the first half from Almiron to push the ball onto the frame of the goal so let's not forget about that well, there's lots of things that will be worth watching on, on the highlights tonight I don't know if there'll be anything better than that it was such a brilliant save yeah match of the day too for that uh, or indeed any time you can watch it on the on the iPlayer as I did indeed part of it this morning, match of the day. Out to the right-hand side, Trippier chests it down, Almiron's there with him. Almiron looking up, low ball in, 25 yards out, Bruno Gimaraic lifts it back to the right-hand side to Trippier, and then Tonali's here, foot on the ball, rolls it forward, Trippier back to Tonali on the right, Tonali shielding it from McAllister, still Tonali into the, the uh, corner quadrant, but his ball across is straight at Robertson, who is able to take it away, but they haven't cleared it yet, Liverpool. And McAllister is forced to play it back to Allison, who chips it out here to Robertson, who heads it forward. Here's Diogo Jota. Nice ball in field. Now Robertson on the surge, but Joe Linton also on the surge, back into a defensive position. And, uh, and there encapsulates what has made Joe Linton so popular around here after his difficult early years. Yeah, and again, I've said it so many times, said it when he was having his tough time. He's a player but they played in the wrong position. He's just not very good when he's back to the goal. But you play him in a different position coming from deep. He was always good enough. Well, that's what Steve Bruce always used to say yeah. about him. Here's Gordon now. Gordon running towards the edge of the area. Still going. It opens up. And he sends the shot wide of the top right corner. That would have been some goal if he planted that into the top right corner. I think Harvey Barnes was uh, warming up a wee moment ago. Just sit down again, mate, because <laughs> it would be amazing if you took... Anthony Gordon off just now, he's having such a brilliant game, he just gl gliding past one, two, three Liverpool players, 
If they'd have got that shot on target, it would have been one of the best goals they've seen well, in this early part of the season. For a moment there, that had a touch of John Barnes in the Maracanã about it. But, uh, but the finish was not there. And now here is Joe Linton through the middle for Tonali. Still 1-0 Newcastle lead, but Newcastle have certainly had the better of things against the 10 men after Van Dijk's first half sending off. Lines open for 6 or 6 on 5 Live to talk about all the weekend's action with Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton on 08 085 909 693. You can book your call now or via 85058 or via hashtag BBC 606. But this 5 Live in the World Service, it's stayed dry as well, mercifully, for most of the, the afternoon. And uh, Cher receives it from the right. Almiron gives it back to Cher. Now down the right wing for Trippier again. And then a little trip by Jota on the Newcastle captain, free kick on the right flank. So a chance here for, for Newcastle again from the set piece with, what have we got, 25 minutes to go, Pat. Yeah, with that lift that Liverpool got with the players coming on, and yeah, you could see five, maybe pushing 10 minutes, they got a little bit of a lift. But Newcastle have calmed it down a little bit again, they've got on the ball, they've stretched those 10 men again and, you know, Eddie Howe, I think, was very close to making changes. In the last two or three minutes, he's just thought, no, no, it's, it's actually going back our way again. Mm. Changes, you would think, would come. Oh, they will. With the, uh, the players that he's got at his disposal now. New signing, Lewis Hall, not involved today. But a free kick for Newcastle. Trippier plays it in and a glance across the face of goal by Botman. Got up well. Matip went up with him, actually. And the Dutchman could only head it wide and uh, beyond the goal for a goal kick to Alisson. So Newcastle 1, Liverpool 0. World Athletics to follow. So there is live sport tonight. We'll also have the latest on the Tour Championship golf as well, by the way, which uh, could, could have a real thrilling finish coverage of the Ryder Cup to come at the end of next month, the, the live sport we've got for you, Rugby Union World Cup the rest of the Grand Prix and all the top football, Champions League and all to follow, internationals too, here's Jota Jota, lovely ball through, Jota Salah in with a chance and that is an excellent sliding interception from Botman who moments ago was missing the chance at the other end and just when it seemed that Salah was in, in a way that we've seen him so many times over the years, but Botman with a challenge. Oh, fantastic defending there. He just thought Salah would do what he usually does, is dink, and he didn't dink. He just turned around and you know, tried to get it on target with a low drive, and that's why Botman got there. Great defending, but just shows you, as we keep on saying, it's not over. Corner from the right, Sobos lie in, but Nick Pope is able to come and punch it away, and that's that delivery again from Sobos lie. It's quite tricky, that, yeah. isn't it? Oh, wait, it sort of dips into the edge of the six-yard box. Well, considering, you know, Pope early on in the game was coming for some of those crosses and wasn't getting them, he was trying to punch and missing them. He managed to punch that one, but it may well be that Liverpool have said at half-time, look, he's missing one or two of those, zip it in there and ask him the question. But for Newcastle, really, that interception from Sven Botman was was right up there with, with Alisson's save in the first half in terms of a, a central defender's defensive block. Liverpool come again with Salah, who plays it into the shins of of Botman and it's behind for another corner to Liverpool Botman to the rescue corner <laughs> from the right for Liverpool the chip one's going to be the change not for the free kick not the corner kick actually but uh, they often do bring Isaac off when he tires and to bring somebody like Callum Wilson on that's a little bit of a delight isn't it for these Newcastle United supporters but they'd like him to get on at 1-0 it's going to be the Wilson Barnes Double again for Newcastle, double change coming, but corner for Liverpool comes off, Joe Linton's head defending in his own penalty area and that took it right across the goal and out of play for another corner to Liverpool from the left flank. So it's going to be that change that we saw in the last home match here against Aston Villa, Wilson and Barnes coming on together and they both scored in the win against Aston Villa. Sobos Light, only 1-0 right now, Sobos Light swings it in again and that is headed away well. I think it was Byrne who got there for, for Newcastle and falls over, comes back to Sobos Lai, in goes the delivery once again and, and this time it's Botman who got his head to it to put it behind for a corner from the right-hand side and this is great Liverpool set-piece pressure. Oh, especially down at 10 men, what they would love to have right now is Virgil van Dijk going attacking some of those balls because they've been zapped in there and 
knife edge here for Newcastle United. They're defending it okay, but he just needs one head to get on the end of it. Yep. Matip has scored a, a few goals from set pieces over the time for Liverpool. Joe Gomez hasn't, but he's in there. So it is a, an in-swinger from Robertson from the right-hand side. Here's the Liverpool corner, headed powerfully away by Dan Byrne. That was commanding. There was only one man getting that, and it was the Newcastle left back. However, Alexander-Arnold overhits the pass from centre field <laughs> all the way through, <laughs> and they're claiming that he was having a shot at goal. I, do you know, I Newcastle think it's fans. something else that the fans were shouting there. The ball went to Pope, and on the halfway line was Alisson. They wanted Pope to go and launch and try shoot. to score from there. They wanted Pope to shoot. <laughs> exactly. Newcastle 1, Liverpool 0. 20 minutes to go. And Liverpool have had a good spell here. Newcastle waiting to make the changes. And it does feel that they just need that. The, the changes, the two changes Jurgen Klopp made, freshened Liverpool. And Newcastle just needs something. New legs, really. Robertson playing the ball across his own back line. Back out to the fullback on the right-hand side to Alexander-Arnold. Alexander-Arnold then passing it forward. Uh, Harvey Elliott out there. Back to Alexander-Arnold again, left-footed from him. And uh, Cher gets up ahead of Jota. Canali got there first for Newcastle and was able to play it back to, uh, to his goalkeeper again. So 1-0 Newcastle. Full Monday night club tomorrow night when Ben Mee, by the way, Brentford's Ben Mee will be part of the lineup with Mark Chapman tomorrow evening in five line sport from seven o'clock. Newcastle with the ball at the back. And then uh, Carabao Cup commentary on Tuesday and Wednesday night on Five Live and Sports Extra. When there'll be coverage of those European qualifiers as well. Big midweek for Rangers going to PSV as uh, in the one day cup as Newcastle make these changes. And uh, as we expected, Isaac is coming off first for Wilson. Uh, in the one day cup, Worcestershire chasing a big total 307 to beat Hampshire. Worcestershire fell short 296 for nine, and Hampshire have won by. 10 runs, so Hampshire are through. Uh, and on Sports Extra, the men's 100 final continues at Lords right now. And uh, that's it for... Um, it's going to be a triple change, actually, for Newcastle. Anthony Gordon coming off, and Tonali as well, so three changes. So Sean Longstaff coming on, as well as Barnes and Wilson. So Eddie Howe, in the end, going for the triple change for the last, uh, well, just under 20 minutes. Mildly surprised that you're taking Anthony Gordon off. He's having such a great time. Um, Almiron's lively and will keep on running, but, you know, he's not had such an impact on the game. But then, I'm sure on that right-hand side of Liverpool, they'll not be looking forward to an on-form Barnes yep. running at him. Here's Barnes now, straight into the action, trying to play it through, but... Uh, Matip was able to come across, bounces back to the edge of the Liverpool penalty area, Matip clears away, comes out to Joe Linton. I think, having seen him this season, and it's OK, it's only three matches and the two home matches that I've seen in full, that uh, Anthony Gordon will be part of the England equation, having done so well for the under-21s in the tournament win at the end of last season. Mind you, England are very strong in, in the forward position, so we'll see. Might stick with the under-21s. But uh, Trippiat playing it in field towards Bruno Gimmerange. And now here's Joe Linton back towards Bruno Gimmerange. And now Dan Byrne. Here's Barnes now. Barnes who will have instructions to do exactly what Anthony Gordon did. Although in saying that, he actually comes in field and gives it back to Byrne again from the left hand side. Lots of gulls circling over St James's Park. Out to the left, to the right hand side. Almiron does well for Newcastle to keep it in. Trippiat back to Almiron. And then Byrne is there as well. Uh, Longstaff it is. Longstaff receiving it back on the right-hand side. Longstaff whips it over. And Wilson with the header, stooping, sort of bending around Matip, could only head it six yards wide for a goal kick. What is noticeable now that Elliot is trying to give a little bit of cover over there on that far side there, just to help out. There's so much who's coming down that left-hand side there that he's gone over there. And I think that's long overdue. You should be helping your mates out and certainly... The manager should be saying that, but I think you're coming club the quite happy at the moment. Well, to a degree, because they're still in it. 1-0, and they have fought and battled and created the odd half chance on the break. Newcastle United 1, Liverpool 0. And even though Liverpool have played 
since, well, the 29th minute it was, Van Dijk was sent off. This game is still very much alive. Ball played forward, Pope comes well out of his penalty area, and it was Salah who was chasing it, so hearts were in mouths, but unlike in this match last season, Nick Pope was able to get there and headed away out of play, and then uh, actually, as Liverpool wanted to take a throw, a Newcastle fan in the East stand threw the ball back onto the pitch, so therefore referee Brooks had to, to Did, stop it. I think he let it go initially but then you know they needed to then when the ball went out he's going to allow them to play on but Newcastle didn't kick the ball out quick enough Newcastle uh, then played forward and Jota goes down against Trippier inside the area and uh, and Trippier is furious with the way that Jota threw himself down and referee Brooks comes across calmly and says it's okay I, I saw that clearly Trippier's still enraged points at Jota glares at him but it's given just as a goal kick well, you just think to yourself, if you're waiting for that ball to come in, the defender, does he get any of it? And he takes Jota out, so I don't understand why he's upset. Goal kick. Lines open for 6.06 .06 to talk to Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton. Big incidents to discuss from this game. 08, 08, 5, 9, 9, 6, 9, 3 to book your call. Here's Almiron running from the halfway line. Almiron now taking it on. He's away from McAllister. Still going into the area. Curling shot hits the post! What a goal that would have been! Not unlike Gordon a little earlier. Almiron denied by the post. He put the bend on it with his left foot as well. I have to say, I thought it was bending in. Struck the face of the post. And then Liverpool put it behind now for a corner. Do you know when they run into space, they are thrilling. Newcastle are thrilling. They've got players that want to take on defenders. McAllister was trying to catch up with Almiron there. Wasn't getting anywhere near him. And he had the, the, the awareness to go and pull himself inside there. And just curl it. Not only you and I, I'm sure Almiron thought that was going in as well. Oh. What a goal it would have been. Almiron denied by Alisson onto the frame of the goal in the first half. And there, again, this time the shot against the post. But Pat Nevin is absolutely right. Thrilling play, thrilling forward play from the Newcastle wide men. 1-0, the home team lead. Corner they have as a result of that which is a deep one of the back post Allison has actually stumbled and fallen over it was headed back across by Joe Linton I think at the back but N Liverpool were able to clear out of play near the halfway line and uh, Jurgen Klopp is going to make another change and actually it's Gerald Kwanzaa who's coming on for what will be his debut his senior competitive debut and uh, Darwin Nunez also coming on so it's another double change for Liverpool a big moment this for Gerald Kwanzaa who's uh, a young man of the northwest of England born in Warrington England under 20 international Bristol Rovers fans will have watched him last season central defender he is can play it right back and this is it big moment for him and Darwin Nunez Yep, so they're going for it last, last few minutes, aren't they? They're going to try and get as many players forward as they possibly can just now. And you know, many managers do this, don't they? They've, they've got 10 men realise, OK, if we can hang on, hang on, we have a little bit of a dig for the last 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, Alexis McAllister coming off for, uh, for Darwin Nunez, who's already putting himself about. He scored here last season in the 2-0 Liverpool win. Gomez pulling the shirt of Wilson. Uh, but the referee says it was Wilson and I think it was the assistant who gave that the referee saying initially it was Wilson actually pulling the shirt of Gomez so it's a free kick to Liverpool for the initial foul again the changes when they've been happening in this game so far have lifted each team they said the Liverpool had that little bit of a five or ten minutes when they made their first set of changes they've made another couple now see if it can have another positive effect on them this is quite a vote of confidence isn't it for the 20 year old yeah. Gerald Kwanzaa well, there's another side of it, he might be needed. <laughs> he might be. <laughs> he might be needed in the next few weeks. With the injuries, Canate out, Van Dijk will be suspended. Liverpool against Aston Villa next Sunday. Uh, and also the Newcastle match next Saturday is a five live commentary. Ball forward for Nunez, who pulls it down near the edge of the area. But Newcastle were back in numbers and Byrne and Botman did the job. And now Joel Linton does well and sends away Barnes. Barnes into the area on the left. Barnes looks for goal, shoots deflected right across the face of goal. And then Allison sprinting across the six yard box just gets a lovely, delicate touch on that with one of those black gloves to prevent it from going out for a corner. Uh, Barnes, it is his final touch there when he went down the left hand side. He was trying to get it out of his feet so he could play it across to Wilson.
who would have had it happen? And he got into the right position, but there was one final poor touch there for Barnes, and he never quite got it in. He was, however, played on by Kwanzaa. Jota now playing a little deeper, runs from deep. Nunez tries to give it back to him on the edge of the Newcastle penalty area. The burn was across to clear it. And then uh, Robertson does well to win the ball against Almiron. Bit of experience from him. And then uh, Sobos Lai, not much of a contact from Bruno Gimmerein, but enough as Sobos Lai goes down and wins the free kick. By the way, can I take my, that back there? It wasn't Kwanzaa that played them on, it was Gomez who played them on. It was a very obvious stand-up for an offside there, but this is a back line that don't play with each other very often. Free kick then for Liverpool, who could still certainly get something out of this game, with Newcastle leading through that golden goal in the first half when Alexander-Arnold made the mistake and let Gordon in to run through on goal. Concept down the right and uh, and actually Joe Linton in that challenge with Kwanzaa uh, has actually ended up sitting down. He's hauled to his feet by Nunez and takes the throw in back towards the halfway line where actually Kwanzaa is in the right back position and Alexander-Arnold is in the central defensive position just now and again comes back to Alexander-Arnold Salah with a flick forward to Jota Jota then plays it forward it bounces off Botman Nunez could be in and he scored super finish from the angle low across goal into the far bottom corner and Darwin Nunez might well have salvaged a point for Liverpool from this so much has gone against them here but that is a fine, fine finish, and it's Newcastle 1, Liverpool 1. You know that, just since the changes, once again, when the manager makes the changes, one and a half effect. He did it the first time, it had a good effect. He's done it again now, and he's put on in a forward You don't need 10 men, but you've got Nunez on the pitch, you've got Jota on the pitch, you've got Salah on the pitch. That's ultra positivity from Jurgen Klopp there, when you're down to 10 men. Now here's the question, do you keep on going? Do you try and go for the three points now? That would be a big, big ask. They're going to have a look now at the offside, whether it was. I thought it looked okay to me. Well, there is a feeling, I know, from those who can see the screens, that this this might be offside. I thought it looked okay, but they will have a look at it. Botman got in a, tan a right tangle there. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was part of the problem. He tried to clear it, the ball got caught up underneath him, bounced through to Nunez, right side of the area. Play's not restarted yet. Newcastle now making their uh, fourth change, Joe Linton being replaced by the promising young Elliot Anderson in midfield and referee Brooks blows the whistle, yeah, it's, uh, it's onside, it's onside, VAR have looked at it, no worries and it is Newcastle 1, Liverpool 1. Well they certainly didn't have to look at their offside, I think they were worried about maybe some other infringement it wasn't offside not even close to it well done Liverpool you know fought back to get back into this for the last five minutes is the best we've probably looked in the game since Van Dijk's went off which is pretty impressive when you've been down to 10 men and you've had to work this hard that belief that confidence that psychology that I was talking about early on have Newcastle got it to go ahead and win against the likes of Liverpool well the answer is still in the air well we thought it was a day maybe that was going to be very big for Newcastle in terms of belief. Actually, it might turn out to be a very big day for Liverpool in terms of belief. Sending off of Van Dijk could have lost Alexander-Arnold early in the match. Other things have gone against them. They clearly feel that Newcastle haven't been able to find a second goal. And it's the Liverpool fans you can hear who are cheering and they might be looking for more. Jota down the left-hand side for Liverpool. Slips the ball into the penalty area. Nunez is there, returns it. Jota couldn't get the shot in. Bounces to the edge of the area. Sobos lie in the D. He shoots. That's blocked by Byrne. And the ball bounces for Newcastle. And Almiron, who clears up towards Wilson, who might have been shoved over by Gomez there, but no free kick. And the ball actually, in any case, bounces for Newcastle over to the left-hand side. Could be a grandstand <laughs> finish with, what, six minutes to play. Uh, France 26, Australia 5 is the latest score in the Rugby Union World Cup 
warm-up match. Pat Nevin. It does not feel like 11 against 10 just now, does it? It certainly doesn't. Liverpool have worked hard, they've got players they've brought on, have had a good impact on the game. And also, that right about a lack of belief from some of the Newcastle players, their changes haven't worked anywhere near as well as the changes that Liverpool have made just now. And there's a bit of tiredness from one or two players, such as Bruno Guimaraes, who's gone down there. He's got a free kick. I think he's very lucky in that situation. I think uh, Nunes agreed with me, but too much. And we've got a yellow card now. A card for Nunez, but it was Sobol's lie with the challenge. So a yellow card for, for Darwin Nunez, which, which is a really cheap one. Free kick to Newcastle. And uh, Trippier then plays it forward, and it's headed across goal, but well wide. And actually, uh, Botman, who'd gone up for that and headed it wide, as he fell or as he was challenged, it's maybe been caught on the ankle, so we've got a stoppage in play, and uh, the referee waves him on, waves on the uh, the physio to have a look at Sven Botman. So uh, just over five minutes to play. Newcastle won, Liverpool won, and the Liverpool fans singing the name of Darwin Nunez, who has not been in the team at the start of this season. The Uruguayan, the record signing, remember, deal worth up to 85 million pounds for Liverpool so that that certainly is uh, a blow to the ego as much as everything else and not only that he's watched Salah and Jota and Luis Diaz score goals this season but that was an excellent finish to score here at St James's Park for the second consecutive season yeah um, to be honest the attitude has been brilliant coming on that's what managers want I mean if you're going to be on the bench <laughs> no point coming on with the bottom lip. Everyone who has come on has come on with a very good attitude. Jota, particularly, you know, it's he won't necessarily get the headlines here, but he's pushed the game a lot further forward. He's run Trippier back, so he's had to go and be a lot more defensive than he would rather be in this situation. That period, at the start of the second half, when Newcastle could have put the entire thing to bed, they didn't. Obviously, they had the post. There was a chance for for Gordon as well when he was on. But you have to put Liverpool away, don't you? And they didn't manage to do that. And of course, managers know when to make the changes. And the changes that Jurgen Klopp have made are fantastic. And oh, just right. up until before this injury, I think Jurgen Klopp was thinking much more about going for the third three points than sticking by the one. Now this is this is a big loss for Newcastle here. Sven Botman, who's been uh, such a good signing, hasn't he? This, this very promising Dutch defender and uh, he's having to be helped off the field and Matt Target has come on to replace him so Dan Byrne moving across into central defence but with all of the commitment you know he's one of the players who is an absolute frontliner for Newcastle and uh, Eddie Howe will not want to lose him with with all of these challenges coming up for Newcastle in the coming months Champions League draw coming up on Thursday for them for the first time for, for 20 years being involved in a Champions League group here's Bruno Gimaranch on the halfway line up to Liverpool goal scorer Darwin Nunez the score is 1-1 and now uh, Newcastle playing it out to the left hand side Anderson to Barnes Barnes into the area Elliot Anderson is there Anderson looking for support it comes from target involved in the match for the first time and uh, Newcastle with Anderson again goes centrally Bruno Gimmerich that's a heavy touch from him over the top all the way through to Allison easily do you know what control of the midfield Liverpool look better for it now and the energy there when they got the ball back goes back to keeper Allison. the pace in which Jota Nunes and Salah sprinted forward there slightly surprised he didn't play it early and long because the three going forward to scare the living daylights out of a defence that's had to be changed in the last few moments. Uh, Kwanzaa has come back into defensive position, central defensive position. Uh, Alexander Arnold does ball across Liverpool, Newcastle back in possession. Here's Barnes back. It comes to Bruno Gimmerich, who's warned by the Gallagher end. The Darwin Nunez with his hair all tightly tied up is coming and. Uh, he finds Cher, Newcastle going from right to left, 1-1 one, one the score, we're into the last two minutes of the 90. Now, Newcastle, Bruno Gimmerang plays it in the area, deflection, Almoron shoots, that's blocked inside the box, howls for a handball, I think it was Jota that it hit. But uh, I see Pat Nevin next to me immediately shaking his head, 
And I don't think any of the Newcastle players actually appealed for that. He's hit the top of his arm, but his, his arms are absolutely down by his side. No chance. A ball through from Bruno Gimreinch. Here's Sean Longstaff. He shoots low, but straight at Allison from just outside the box. 20 yards straight at the goalkeeper. You know, there's very little time left of the of the 90 minutes. It's one of those games that's it's come to such a crescendo now. You're thinking, I'd love another 10 minutes. We might get another 10 minutes here because there's been a lot of substitutions. There's been that injury, obviously, to Botman as well. So, I don't know, we might get more chances, maybe even more goals. As it is, one apiece. John, I mean, I wouldn't say there was any team who was more likely than the other now to go and win this game. I think it's absolutely 50-50, even though Newcastle have got that extra player. Even though it's 11 against 10, Newcastle in possession inside their own half. A Champions League draw for Newcastle. It could be Bayern Munich, Real Madrid and Milan. Let's find out on Thursday. Here's Almiron down the right-hand side. Ball into the penalty area. Wilson's there against Kwanzaa, but coming across him, Wilson got to it, but sent the shot up and over the top of the crossbar by a distance. It Goal is, kick. But he's so far second favourite when that ball was coming in, but typical striker. He will do anything to get in front of uh, the centre-back. He managed to do that, but just couldn't get it on target. But his movement was so tough. So uh, we're in the 90th minute now. We believe there are going to be five minutes added on. Jurgen Klopp, which is him coming to uh, to the fourth official. There's the number. Five minutes. Craig Pawson. Jurgen Klopp. So we saw him indicate five with five fingers. Five. I, I, I'm amazed by that. Mm. Uh, it, how many substitutions we've we had? We've had the Botman injury as well. A goal celebration. So yeah, five minutes. But. And they've expected more. Newcastle 1, Liverpool 1. Lines open for 6.06, which will be coming up shortly after the end of this match. Newcastle with the ball on the right-hand side. Almiron now down the line into the full-back position, but well defended by Gomez to see it behind. So it's a goal kick to Liverpool. Yep, 6.06 to follow on 5 Live. You can read about all the action today on the football pages of the BBC Sport website. Phil McNulty is just in front of us. You'll read his match report uh, watch it all match of the day tonight or on the iplayer and then download the football daily podcast on a monday morning from bbc sounds nadem anua on it all this season on a monday morning allison now finally takes this goal kick long downfield jota challenges share trippier behind him plays it back to pope pope high and long through the middle gomez and wilson tangling Gomez was able to head it forward to Jota, who goes around Bruno Gimorainch and then stumbles down. Contact. Referee Brooks says yes, free kick Liverpool. To put it politely, I think Jota knew what he was doing now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, if you need to get a foul, you get the ball under control, run in towards the player and, you know, manufacture the foul. He did that well. Um, goes under the heading, intelligent play. Uh, Sobos lie. Yet, who once again has caught the eye today, this young Hungarian, just 22 years old with his stature, he, he does look older than that, I would say. Ball played over the top though from right back from uh, from Quanta, but he's put too much on that. Nick Pope is able to get rid of it quickly, he has target, playing for Newcastle for the first time this season. Then a crossfield pass from Anderson, that's good. Anderson impressed pre-season, I'm told. Trippier now into the area, took a deflection to the near post, flicked by Longstaff! <laughs> He uh, flicked it into Allison, and then it bounced up off the Liverpool goalkeeper who was able to, to make the catch. And, and actually returning again to that save that Allison made in the first half that, uh, that now in the grand scheme of things looks uh, well, not, so important. Not just that, you know, they had in the post as well. Newcastle could have got that. And it's, <laughs> they all talk about the fine margins, but they've been very fine this afternoon. Salah, Salah, lovely balance through. Nunez could be in again. He scored again. It's 2-1 to Liverpool. And somehow, somehow, Liverpool down to 10 men for most of this match after Van Dijk sending off. It seems they're going to win it and take all three points here at St James's Park for a third consecutive season. But that finish, that was lightning from Nunez across Pulp into the far corner again. Newcastle 1, Liverpool 2. They absolutely deserve it from what they've done since they made the last couple of substitutions. Nunez has just run the lane brutally. Very similar finish, obviously, to the first goal as well. 
they're slow, they defend and then that back line there. And they've lost Botman from that precise area. Liverpool know what the danger is. They go and put the ball in there and he smashed it in. You've got to say, since they got to the, the, the equaliser, it's looked as if one team really fancied winning this game and one team thought a draw would be okay. And it was Liverpool. That history of, yeah, we can do it. They deserve it. Even though they've had less of the play throughout the entirety of the game, for the bravery they have shown between that last 15, 20 minutes, they deserve to be ahead just now. Those two goals from Darwin Nunez. That one there, I made it in the fourth minute of added time. Newcastle now trying to find a, an equaliser. Newcastle facing defeat here at St James's Park in a Premier League match under Eddie Howe for only the fifth time. And three of them will have been against Liverpool. Now, Liverpool coming forward with Jota. But now Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp have got Newcastle exactly where they want them. And Newcastle losing to Manchester City last weekend, losing to Liverpool this weekend. And Liverpool penning the ball back in there. It bounces out of play. It's a little exchange, I think. Trent Alexander-Arnold. Newcastle fans in that far corner. Be careful, Trent Alexander-Arnold. You cannot card. waste time just now. No. Nope. John Brooks will be onto this. Alexander Arnold takes the throw, Jota drives it across. I mean, I think this will be the last attack of the match. We're in the fifth minute, long and forward. Oh, Gomez has missed that. Wilson's onto it. Wilson, but he's wide, he's in a wide position. And there's cover there as well from Andy Robertson. And Wilson slips over. And Liverpool actually concede a throw in. Poor pass from Robertson to Sobos lie. And that's it. We're into added time on added time now. But there will be time added for the celebration and uh, Longstaff is fouled on the right there'll be a last set piece for Newcastle from the right wing well Dan Burns going up there everyone's going to go up there it, might, it must be a half a temptation as a keeper to go as well it's almost felt like a cup tie in these last few minutes but 2-1 down last opportunity yep he's going Pope's going up there for it too so a free kick to Newcastle on the right Nick Pope coming up to try and and salvage something for Newcastle from this match for long periods never thought we'd be saying that and uh, as Trippier waits to take this Longstaff has fallen over inside the area whether he was tripped or whether he was pushed we don't know and uh, referee Brooks says something I think this will be the last play of the match last chance for Newcastle Trippier curling it in high to the back post Pope goes for the header but Allison is able to allow it to drop beyond the far post cheers from the Liverpool fans in the top tier in the Leasers end at the other end of St James's Park and Alisson I think this goal kick will be the last kick of the match and look at the Liverpool fans up to our left hand side there they're celebrating they absolutely believe they've won this match and they couldn't have thought that obviously they were down to 10 men so early on but the way they have finished this match they look fitter all over the field as I say we can't underline it enough they've got a man left less and you look the better fitter team there's the Allison goal kick and there's the final whistle at St James's Park and we're still not out of August but what a win this is for Liverpool what a blow to the confidence of Newcastle who will have felt they might have been able to challenge for the title this season which of course they may well yet do but last week they lost to Manchester City now they've been beaten here by a Liverpool team that played well over an hour with 10 men after Van Dyke's sending off but two super super finishes by Darwin Nunez has turned it right around and it's finished Newcastle 1 Liverpool 2 Pat Nevin yeah I mean, there's so many things to pick apart from this game and you know great chances from both sides Newcastle could have had it wrapped up should have had it wrapped up but you know, goalkeeping saves, hitting the post, etc, etc. But Liverpool hung on, hung on, hung on. And they just got better and better. You sometimes have to look to the, the manager, though. The type of changes he makes at what times. The changes he made near the end, after they hung on, were brilliant. He went absolutely at them. Because he had Nunes up front, he had Salah running on, he had Jota running on to them in that last 10 or 15 minutes or so that's what he expected to happen that's what he hoped to happen and it's exactly what happened so sometimes you have to say it, well done to the gaffer as well as well done to all the players as for Newcastle right at the start we were talking to Alistair Bruce Ball weren't we about the psychology asking do Newcastle 
are they psychologically strong enough to know that they can beat the likes of Liverpool? They had it there to do it. I don't think they blame it, believed in it enough. Near the end of the game, they didn't know. They thought they could do it, they didn't know. And that's the difference. Liverpool know they can come back from these situations. So Anthony Gordon scoring the, the goal for Newcastle in the first half, shortly before Van Dijk was sent off. But those two late ones from substitute Darwin Nunez means that Liverpool, for the very first time, have won three consecutive league matches away from home against Newcastle. It means that Liverpool's unbeaten start to the season continues. It means Newcastle, two defeats in a row against Manchester City and Liverpool, losing here at St James's Park for the first time this season as well. And just to underline it, under Eddie Howe, Newcastle have lost five of 35 home Premier League matches. Five. Five defeats in the Premier League here. Three of them have been against Liverpool. What a match. Newcastle won. Liverpool too. Hugely dramatic way to finish five lives uh, Premier League Sunday. Lines open for 6.06. Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage waiting to take the calls. 08 085 909 693. So Liverpool fans, Newcastle fans, they will want your thoughts this evening. Pat, the psychology you were just mentioning at the end there is so fascinating. Robbie said at half time, you know, Newcastle 1 0 up in control of the game. Liverpool down to 10 men. Would they have the belief? Would they have the conviction to get it done? They didn't, but again, as you say, all credit to Liverpool for the second half performance. Yeah, yeah. Well, we asked the question at the start. I thought it was the biggest question to ask. John spotted something yeah, down there. Yeah, just to say, Ali, that uh, you might have heard the cheers in the background from the Liverpool fans. We've we've got a, a triple punch of the air from Jurgen Klopp. It's not not too often you see that on away grounds. You usually see it at Anfield. It's usually a barometer of how Liverpool are. And actually, as Klopp walked away from that, he was he was shaking his head as if to say. I don't know how we've won that, but we have. Well, I think we've won it because of what he done and what he asked his players to do. And he, you see when you're playing on a team, Ali, and you know, you're know you down to 10 men, you're 1 0 down, and a manager goes and says, Right, go and attack now. Yeah, I've got, I want three forwards up there, go and attack them, ask them a question, see if they're brave enough. The psychological change in that is, you know, do the opposition, do they believe in themselves enough? Can they hold the ball? Can they control the game at that point in time? And they weren't able to do that. And I, I really do think it comes down, yeah, you need a bit of luck now and again. And there were one or two bits of luck that Liverpool got, um, particularly the great save. You don't call that luck, but you hit the post, you know, it was a brilliant chance by Almiron, and he was unlucky there. But when they had to ask themselves the question, do we know how to do this? Liverpool Football Club knows how to do it. Mm, Newcastle well United don't yet know that okay. that's a big jump well that, there's that, such a change Ali you know, yeah. when we were here just a couple of weeks ago Pat and I watching the win against the, the great win what a win an opening win against Aston Villa and what the feeling was and mood was just watching here you know now they've lost to Manchester City and Liverpool the way the Newcastle players have, have left the field with the, the heads down the shoulders drooping there was a moment Arthur, just before you know Newcastle uh, Liverpool scored the equalising goal uh, John's doing a bit of commentary as my next line was going to be Liverpool looks like as if they can take control of this game mm. now they've got they've got three or four minutes now they changed bringing obviously bringing everyone will talk about bringing Nunes on but don't forget bringing Jota on as well what he added to it as well and suddenly the psychology of, of the defence of Newcastle is wait a minute have they not chucked it <laughs> they haven't <laughs> chucked it this is Liverpool they don't chuck it um, and they, they were just they had no answer to it at all at that point in time I also think maybe a mistake taken off uh, Anthony Gordon when he went off they were much much less dangerous down that left hand side and that made a difference to the game as well OK well that's plenty to respond to for the Newcastle fans tonight on 606 08 085 909 693 it's on the way shortly John Pat thank you very much indeed and Liverpool fans as well Darwin Nunez as you spent so much money on him at the start of last season. What about those two finishes? Massive goals for Darwin Nunes and a fabulous win uh, for Liverpool. Other football